What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 110. 110. Here we are of our Blade Cup Extravaganza Marathon. Live from Long Beach, California. Mm -hmm. Live from Long Beach, California. We just had a lovely episode, 109 with Hayden Ball. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Great guy. It was amazing to talk to him, go through everything. Soothing voice. Known the guy for a long time, and I still learned a few things. <laughs> it was incredible. But um, everyone who's joining us now live, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. If you're joining us, whether live or not live, please hit the like button. And take some of these steps if you like what you're doing. Please go to our Facebook, hit the like button. Go to our YouTube, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you like what you're hearing, please share, leave a comment. These interactions really help with the algorithm and they help boost up our stuff to the front of the page so we can get tied up in your algorithm when you're looking for things to watch and it'll give you a prompt, maybe a little jump street. We have an iTunes. Mm -hmm. If you like what you're hearing, you can give us a five-star rating, you can give us a review, and these things really help uh, also do the same thing in the iTunes world, boost us up so mm -hmm. it would suggest us. The and, iTunes world. Yeah, that'd be cool. We also have a Patreon. Mm -hmm. You can be a Patreon for as low as $3 a month. We offer um, exclusive uh, content. Mm -hmm. We have inside outs, which are trick tips. We have three pieces, which are three, p three tricks from uh, whichever skater that we have. Mm -hmm. We do section reviews mm -hmm. with people who we have on the show, and we watch some of their old sections. We have a commentary through it. And every month, we do a random drawing where if you get picked, you get something free from our online store. You can get a shirt. You can get a not three but five panel hat and you can get a, a one of these lovely jump street mugs i mean who knows maybe in the future if we continue to get support we'll add another thing to the store it's been quite some time what do you guys want to see in the store what do you want to see leave it in the comments Let we don't know. know we don't know what's cool i'm getting to the boomer age i don't know what's happening <laughs> you're googling google i'm starting you see all these grays i'm out of touch you guys got to tell us we what's... just found out that billy google's Google. I Google, Google. Google something. <laughs> yeah. I'm the least tech. I don't know how to use a computer. I barely know how to use Facebook. So, and, and like, I feel like Facebook well, is a boomer thing a, anyway. He does know how to put on a podcast, though. I, I do know how to put on a podcast. All right, thank you very that's much. That's important right now, anyway. Yes, exactly. That is the key. But, <laughs> everyone, thank you for watching. We want to give a shout out to our sponsor for this episode, Blank, who just announced their new uh, Sean Keen model, Pro Skate. Um, if you're at the Blading Cup this weekend in Santa Ana, Blank is going to have a booth. You can check out the skate in person if you haven't seen it already. Sean Keen's going to be there. Oh, yeah. Take a photo with him. He's a nice get guy. An autograph. He's very approachable. I'm just saying, he's not going to say no. He's Go not going to say, say hi. No. He'll appreciate it. Uh, everybody, check out this quick ad from Blank. Hey, what's up? This is Sean Keen out here in New York right now with the Blank Rollerblade team. We're all out here skating my pro skate for the first time in the public. Yeah, we've been developing the skate for about two years right now. Worked with Kyle Solo on a lot of the parts on this skate. Came together really nice, hope everybody likes it. It's gonna be the first release. It's gonna be a beta drop. It'll be a couple of sizes, but the whole point of it is we want the public to test these out too. They're gonna to be able to try it, give us feedback, and we're gonna make changes to the skate for the next final production run of all the sizes. So it'll be something everybody's happy with. I hope everybody's really stoked on the skate, because I know I am. So yeah, I hope everybody enjoys this new skate. So be sure to cop a pair and try them out. Let us know your feedback. Big shout out to Blank. Everybody check them out. Blank Rolling Products. Um, there's a link in the description of this video or check them out on Instagram at, at Blank Rolling Products. Thank you for the sponsorship. Yes, thank you very much, Blank. And shout out to Sean Keen. And again, down at the Blade Cup, swing by the booth, say hi. And don't forget to check out our buddy on our last episode 109, Dusty Denim. At his booth. Hayden, he's got a booth too. Everyone's got booths. We all got booths. <laughs> swing by, say hello. She got a Jump Street booth. These are nice people. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Like our it's, new guest, our very special guest. We ready for I've that guest? Pleasure. I've just met him today. Yes. And I've seen him for so long. I've been watching him. We've interacted a few times on DMs. Mm -hmm. feel like I know the guy already. Can't wait to talk to him more. Beautiful. Please welcome Yandrel Silverio. <laughs> or you, you could just call him Yandi <laughs> if you see him at the plate. Yandi. <laughs> <laughs> or Yandy, right? Is he? Yandy is fine. Yandy, Yandy, is fine. Yandy Yandriel. Nice. My my family members call me uh, Gordo, which Gordo? is like endearing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hispanic families are very just like endearing with like nicknames and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm a twin, and my brother was. Oh, you're a twin. I was like the chubbier baby when I was born, and my brother was the skinnier one. Mm -hmm. So he's so flaco. They, yeah, he's flaco. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. Very cool. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's, cool. that's where you get. That's <laughs> if you're it, the man. chubby baby, that's, that's in a Spanish family, you're gordo right away. Like. That's it. 
and it just lasts a lifetime. Well, you get it when you're a baby, and they're still you calling you that, and you're like your 30s <laughs> and 40s. That's it. You can't get rid of it, no. End up having like your nieces call you that. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, my little cousins call me that, and they're like 22. It's oh, like, well, this wow. is weird, you know? Like, like That's yeah, really it's funny. like, uh, but I guess it's endearing, you know? I come to accept it. Yeah. <laughs> I could see it affecting people though you know some people might you know if you feel self-conscious about it that's fine too you know but that's communication you need to have with your family and whatnot but um more times than not it's it's just like endearing and accepting and yeah kind of like a yeah it's a it's a loving yeah. way it's a loving have, way have family yeah, yeah, yeah like we yeah. have a in, in my family too like very new york family like we got irish we got italian in my family mm -hmm. and they all bust chops that's all they do they just like we like mm -hmm. we, we make fun of each other to like show that like we love yeah. one another it's like that's the way we because i don't know everyone's too tough to be like plus the new york you. plus the new york something too. like that so we're just gonna be like look at this guy he's uh he thinks who he is or something but it's just like it's part of like the endearing i think yeah, love definitely. that you're talking about yeah. i think that even some of my my friends my close friends that i've known for a while my friend umberto mm -hmm. he calls me gordo sometimes because like, yeah. it's just like you know he's yeah he's technically family yeah, you know he's, family. he's like i've yeah, like That's easier for Americans friends. to say than Yandria. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But most most people, and so I live in Illinois now, um, and most people there call me Yandy. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a lot easier. At least most of my uh, coworkers and just friends that I skate with, they call me Yandy. So mm -hmm. a lot easier to pronounce. <laughs> Hey, but, you know, I think if you're living out here in America, you know, pick up a little Spanish. For real. It's good to know. Yeah. You could use it in so many different places. Even if you're in Illinois. It's not going to hurt. So mm -hmm. maybe you can start with Yandy, but, you know, you can try it. <laughs> <Stop laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a Spanish word. <laughs> you, can, you can try it, but just start, you know, go with Yandrea. You know, you work your way up. You know, it's, it's up to you. Fair enough. Fair what enough. about Miami? Was Miami still... Yeah, no, Miami people can pronounce my name perfectly yeah, fine. Yeah, half, perfectly fine. Half, half the Cubans in Miami have Y names, probably. <laughs> like, if you were born in the 90s, there's a very high probability that you have a Y name. It's just... Really? Know, yeah. So a lot of kids in Cuba that were born in the 90s, since Cuba was um, so influenced by Eastern Europe, they got Y names. And then you look at um, the relationship that Cuba and Puerto Rico have had throughout history. There's even songs written about it, like... Um, uh, two, two different wings of the same bird or the two wings of the same bird or whatever, which is describing the island of Cuba and the island of Puerto Rico hmm. and kind of their relationship. They've ev they even tried to liberate themselves um, from Spain at the same time. But I think that communication in that time was obviously difficult. So they're like some time apart, you know, mm -hmm. but they've always had a relationship. So even Puerto Ricans have Y names. Like you but, look at all and these. You said that's a relationship with Eastern Europe. Yes, hmm. with uh, Soviet Union at the oh, time. So in the they, 90s, oh, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Because Cuba was always, um, they always had a relationship with them mm -hmm. um, through, I guess, um, their socialistic party or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. So a lot of kids in the 90s got Y names. Yeah. Mm, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I love the cultural history we just learned right yeah now. look at this <laughs> a little bonus for you guys <laughs> yeah. i really feel like we're, we're gonna learn so much on this episode <laughs> maybe it feels cool i like this um that's cool i can see everyone like and everyone in uh, miami is pronouncing your name properly they're probably calling you like gordo down the street they're just like how do you know that how do you know that yeah everybody just, kind of you, I just, your family cousins cousins, cousins, cousins yeah. his friends yeah it's just everybody's related everyone's yeah. connected huh yeah so um so you're cuban i'm cuban yes yeah and you're you, where are you from you're from cuba uh so yeah i was born in cuba and i came to this country as a toddler um my dad um so my dad when he was I think he was 27. He stole a boat from the Cuban government and he came to stole America. a boat. Yeah, he stole a boat. He's a fisherman in Cuba and he stole a boat from the Cuban government because um, it's a dictatorship there. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to make that clear. It's mm -hmm. the, um, the reality. That's the sad reality of what Cuba is. Um, I know that they have like a pseudo, like, hey, this is what we are, but that's they don't practice socialism. And they don't practice any of the things that they kind of preach. Um, so it's a dictatorship. My dad wanted to leave the country to give um, his kids a better opportunity, meaning my twin brother and I have a twin brother and then my sister, Jenny, which is older. My twin brother's name is Yaniel. Mm -hmm. Very similar nice. names. Yeah. yeah. And then Jenny got the regular name. <laughs> 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 she got Jenny with a J. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So my dad left the country, came to America. I think he worked for a year or so and then he financed the boat and he went back to Cuba on that boat and he brought his family to um miami or well the keys i think or at that time you were actually able to call the coast guard and be like hey i'm entering you know the u.s i got my family 
on the boat. My kids, my brother and I had chicken pox, so they picked us up in a helicopter in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of interesting. Yeah, but but now there that doesn't exist anymore. Then they came with the wet foot, dry foot law, where you have to like touch land or whatever to stay there as like a Cuban immigrant. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I think that um, that doesn't even exist. You got to come legally, whatever whatever that means. I, I know there's still loopholes that people use to come to this country to kind of get away from that system over there. But yeah, I came to this country as a toddler. I was born in Cuba, and I lived um, most of my life in Miami, Florida. I've been in the Midwest now, Rockford, Illinois, to be specific, for about four and a half years now. Yeah. Well, you made that seem really easy coming to America on a boat. Was it? No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, you yeah, like. So... I feel like there was had to have been more of a struggle than just that. You made it seem like, oh, we got on the boat, we just got off, I had <laughs> yeah. chicken pox, they picked me up in the helicopter, <laughs> no, took an it... Instagram selfie. <laughs> 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 took an Instagram <laughs> selfie, wrote a blog about it. <laughs> just, <laughs> blog about it. Yeah, just, I was like, "Hey guys, I'm here. Yeah. We out here." Yeah, we out here. <laughs> um, no, it it was. Um, so my dad was wanted by the Cuban government since he stole a boat. So he's like a traitor to oh, their yeah. to their cause or whatever you know to their system. So my dad was wanted by the Cuban government. So what they do when you're a traitor is that they train. Everybody's forced to um, join the military in Cuba. I think it's two years. Um, and they, if you work for like their Coast Guard or whatever their Coast Guard is called, I'm not sure if it's a similar name or whatever, um, but they like show you like traitors or whatever. So my dad was wanted. So he actually had to sneak in and... To get um, you guys. Right? Yeah. He hid the boat in some mangroves um, from, what, from what I remember from the stories that he's told me. And then he had to kind of avoid seeing people that he knew because um if you're like kind of like a snitch for the government there's incentives to that like oh they'll give you food they'll give you like an extra ration of food like now you could eat healthy you know like if you snitch on someone you know and like if you have kids and you're like whatever i want my kids to eat like you'll snitch on someone you know i don't give a fuck about this guy you know like that's the sad reality of what goes on there yeah um so then my dad just arrived um we're from remedios um, which is in Las Villas, which is a province of Cuba. And my dad's from Caivarien, so he had the boat there. And um, I forgot how long the trip is. It was probably like an hour 20 by like car or whatever. So he arrived in Remedios, and he, my mom was very brave to do this. Um, kind of just be like, hey, yeah, let's up and go to the United States, you know, with like three children. And like two of them have chicken pox, which my brother and I at the time. And like, yeah, like that's that's difficult to do as an immigrant, you know, like just... <laughs> I mean, you, li- line. you literally have nothing, you know, like yeah. you're, yeah. you're coming to this country with with absolutely nothing and with three children. Like my sister was maybe six or seven at the time. And this goes back to my first memory as a child. We're walking through the mangroves and my sister had this two liter Coke bottle cut in half. And she was like catching little crabs and like mm. putting it in there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm, that's, that's like just such an intense yeah. experience and like i'm just thinking about like that's like the what was on your your dad's mind like when he was heading to cuba yeah like on the boat that's think... just like a super like hash mission moment you yeah. know what it I mean? is like i'm pick up my family right yeah, now it's on, it, it's like oh, it's like kind of like it's like the transporter but way gnarlier <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah this little buff short cuban yeah. dude just, yeah. just like on a mission just, like, <laughs> that is <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's and it's intense. And look how we're, and I guess like you said they they got you from a helicopter in the middle. Yeah, like uh, not sure how close to um, the U.S. we were at the time. I think it was um, once there's international waters, so I'm assuming that the U.S. can't really help you out. There. I don't I don't know the laws. I don't yeah. know what the laws were at the time either. But I know we got picked up helicopter. We came out of newspaper and everything. Whoa. Like oh, damn. you know, twins. You know, like we're twins. It's yeah. like it was a good it was a good story. Yeah, you know, to headline story. in a newspaper. You know, yeah. it's a great story. Um, and definitely since there's always been like this gray area of like political systems when it comes like U.S. versus Cuba. So I'm sure this was a great headline for U.S. You right, know, yeah. I see both sides, you know, course, like yeah, yeah. what year was this? Uh, 93, 92. Okay, so well, I think it was 93. Yeah, 1993. Um, but yeah, no, it, m- it must have been uh, dangerous for my dad. And like, he's or maybe he's some sort of sociopath and just like didn't like, think about <laughs> it like. Like, um, he's done a lot of things in his life where it's just like, you didn't think about what you're doing. You just just did it. Like, you know, like you just kind of like, uh, same kind of mindset you get when you're skating Yeah. Mm. and you're like, I almost landed that trick. And you kind of don't think about like the things that could go wrong. And you just like Mm. 
send it, you know, quote yeah. unquote. And it's like, yeah, that's similar mentality, I think. When you just do something that um, could land you in prison and tortured for the rest of your life, you know, because they would have imprisoned him and probably tortured him to be like, who do you work for in America? And it's just like, I don't work for anyone. I'm just coming to get my fucking kids out of this yeah. country, you know, yeah. like, like, yeah, just like. It's kind of what it's like. So you don't really have any wow. memory in Cuba itself, really. No, but I did visit um, twice a year um, from the ages of, I don't know, like maybe eight or something to like, I was like 15, 14. So how are you allowed to go back? Um, when Obama lifted the embargo, was it then? No. Uh, well, there was no, I don't think the embargo was ever lifted. Oh, okay. um, but there was, there was um, certain laws that allowed Cuban family members to visit Cuba so the reason why the Cuban government allows Cubans to go to other countries to visit is because we are kind of like a, um, like the way that I think is, you know, like sports teams have like farm teams or whatever. Like they grab like players from like, you know, like, oh, they, they work yeah. with universities or whatever. So we are there kind of like we like uh, give them a lot of money. Every time we visit Cuba, we're giving their government a lot of money. Um, so I think that my dad was telling me now for him to send his mom a hundred dollars, he needs to pay like $40. So if he sends a hundred, his mom only gets like 60 bucks or something, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's like 40% of that money gets, gets given to the Cuban, Cuban government one way or another. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Cuban government allows Cubans to left the country to visit. However, they have this very interesting process where they require people like me to have a Cuban passport that I have to renew every two years. So it's like, it's like a money thing, you know, it's like, mm, yeah. um, and that's why certain um, presidents or certain political leaders in the United States, sometimes when they get elected, they don't allow you to visit Cuba more than, you know, once every two years or whatever, because they see that. And since there's always been that kind of uh, relationship, um, it falls into politics, sadly, um, just like a lot of things do you know but yeah. it's like i, I just want to see my family i just want to see my friends you know why does it have to be a political thing you know like yeah. but it does and um that's kind of what what happens um so the cuban government loves when cubans visit because they bring in money um however there is a process yeah um wow and, yeah there's yeah it's yeah. interesting <laughs> super intense story yeah, yeah no all i mean it, it's 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 amazing um to hear all that and get that perspective because I think a lot of the times, especially like in America, I feel like we're disconnected from a lot of these like things. America is such a big country. It's so insulated and like a lot of, like, you know, a lot of people don't need to learn, we're so privileged learn any other language places, yeah. or anything like that. They can just speak English mm -hmm. but just, and not be aware of like what's happening on the outside world. But to hear that uh, directly is like pretty, yeah, pretty intense. Yeah. Um, so I guess you were visiting for a while. Did you like keep friends over there? Like keep like relationship with people over there as you were going back to visit? Um, my cousins, um, they're the ones that I would hang out with the most. So my cousin Eric from my dad's side. Um, got an E name. Huh? He e e he's, he's got he an E name. Yeah. Later. <laughs> yeah, he was born after. Yeah, no, no. He's, he's about my age, which is kind of strange. It depends. <laughs> it really depends. Yeah, it really, yeah, it really depends. <laughs> Probably more than half the kids in the 90s got Y names, but he got, he got Eric. Uh, maybe his dad was more, uh, I don't know, influenced by American culture or something. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where that name originated from. I, I'm probably incorrect about that comment but whatever you know like yeah. you got eric mm -hmm. um i got yandriel which is fine you know like yeah. <laughs> it's different um in other parts of the u.s and miami is super common mm -hmm. but um yeah i would hang out with my cousins there's so many cousins <laughs> so it's like really you know i had my friends already there you know they're always at home and like it was nice it was a nice experience because like whenever we would visit as kids my brother and i and my sister like all of my cousins would just go to my grandma's old house which my aunt at the time named Mitla, she was living there. And like, we all just stayed there for like the two months that, I, that my brother and I and my, my siblings were in Cuba for, and we'll just have like a blast. Cause like, um, I guess the money that you're taking as a visitor from another country as a tourist, even though I was born in Cuba, I'm, I, I would still consider myself a tourist, you know? Cause like, right. I guess there's like, you know, I guess it was my country, but like, I view it like, oh, there's a gray area. Like um, I, I come from, some sort of, of a privileged yeah. background at that point you know i had i had that american dollar which was worth yeah. 28 cuban pesos you know mm -hmm. like i could get like fucking five foot long subs like <laughs> like in a festival you get what i'm saying like i could eat for like <laughs> yeah. a week with a dollar you yeah. know and it's like
but a person who lives in Cuba gets paid, you know, gets paid like nothing, you know, like eight dollars a month, U.S. dollars, you know, in comparison yeah. or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was just like um, kind of interesting going back and having just my friends were my family members. Like, we'll go to like pools and we'll go to like just like take like horse carriages like random places or like there's this other like transportation system called VC taxi which is just like somebody on a bike and they have like seats in the back and they're just taking you around like that's very common in Cuba at least in that time I haven't gone since I was 15 and um I saw that when I was there a few years back yeah yeah the VC taxi yeah yeah there's there's there that still exists I'm sure um but I there's like this period in and as a Hispanic that comes to this country at an early age where um, you kind of become separated from your culture, you kind of just like ignore it, you know, like from like the ages of like 15 to 25 or something, you know, like you become this angsty teen, which is like where my sarcastic Instagram name originated from, you know, mm. and it's like you kind of separate yourself from like what your parents, you know, their culture and like, you know, and like, because you're like searching for this maybe identity in a way, because like, you're very influenced by like this Hispanic culture, but like technically live in America now, you know, and like it's different, you know. Like, yeah. Um, and I, you know, I guess that's why skating was like my thing, because it's like it's a little bit of everything in skating. I want to say, you know, like yeah, yeah. Miami is like very like Hispanic, Caribbean driven, and maybe I didn't feel like one hundred percent attached to that in those ages. I want to say that now I, the older that I get, the more that I appreciate it. But um, that's one of the reasons why I haven't gone back. And then another reason is that, like, it just costs money. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And I'm totally against supporting that system. And it's like, I'm just going to have to put that aside and just go and visit them. There's a lot of skaters over there. Yeah. And um, I actually wanted to get into that because, um, like you said, like, first of all, this is very captivating and everything is, like, super cool. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Completely um, perspective on, but well, I, yeah, I, I was wondering about because like when we had Lewis on the on the podcast, he was saying like, I wasn't sure like if there was like any skating scene down there, and he was saying he had a friend and he would you know steal mangoes to, and sell them to get enough money for twenty eight pesos, where he would like rent the skates for like a day or a weekend yeah. or something like that, different periods of time. Um, that he also talked about on Wax Toaster. Shout out Wax Toaster, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, I was I was wondering like your experience. Well, I also want to know how you got started skating um, as well. But I I think I, I, I maybe we can start there. But I also want to know like the um, your experience with other skaters, if there are skaters as you say in in Cuba and what that's like. Yeah. So my um, my experience with Cuban skaters, I haven't skated with anybody in Cuba because I got or well I haven't skated in Cuba, and the reason why I haven't skated in Cuba yet was because. When I started skating, I was 13, 14. I can't quite remember the exact age. Like, I must—I was 13 actually. It was—it was January, of like, I, I forgot what year. I was my eighth grade year or whatever. I was 13, and my birthday's in June, so I was 13. And I had skates at the time, and I remember visiting Cuba that summer, which was like June, and I just didn't take them because it's a hassle to bring things into Cuba because they check your fucking bags uh, yeah. and they're like. And then they think that you're bringing things to like sell in Cuba and it's just like, no, this is mine, you know, like, so I just never skated in Cuba because I was still learning how to skate. I wasn't good at it. I just didn't take my skates. So my first ex encounter with uh, somebody from Cu that came from Cuba who skates was my buddy Ismani. And that to me was great because when I was skating in Miami, it was during this time where like um, people just didn't skate anymore. So I never had somebody who was like at a very good skill level. And then this dude comes out of nowhere from Cuba and he like, it's fucking me up in games of skate. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's like, Jesus, there must be a scene over there. Yeah. If this guy's good, you know, like, uh. and that was my first experience. And then I got to become really good friends with Yasmani. He's one of my best friends, one of my close friends. And now Yasmani and I, we take care of the Cuban skaters. We put packages together of like skates, wheels, just products. And we send it to Cuba. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at right now with that experience. Um, I've been saying for the past three years, I got to visit Cuba. I got to visit Cuba. Like I got to skate over there. And then COVID makes it difficult. Um, so maybe within the next three years, I'll finally visit Cuba and skate with the skaters over there, depending on how long um, the whole situation with COVID lasts. You know, it's definitely life changing. But um, yeah, I really want to experience that scene 
just more than being this outsider who like sponsors them with products you know like Mm -hmm. i want to be there you know like i want to like like i want to watch one of them get like this like used up wheel and be happy about it you know like that must be a great experience you know like because we're so privileged here you know like like, we'll be able to actually hand them like product or something like that would be great too and just see what they do with it yeah because like so no, it's, seen, it's crazy when you bring that like yeah, something like yeah. that it's just yeah yeah like i've seen videos of yuzmani is like yeah dude taped up his skates and he fucking jumped off a roof and i'm just like jesus like and you see him fucking taping up his skates and like climbing up on a roof and just fucking like hucking like a forward jump yeah it's just a like, lot of heart yeah, it's like, it's just like, the what? Passion, like what like yeah i crack my skates i'm not skating those things you know <laughs> yeah. i'll be scared Man, like, no that's what like cuba's cuba's all about like, even like the cars like the Everyone in Cuba just be building their cars from the 60s when they couldn't get any imported vehicles anymore. You know, same thing with skates. I'm sure they're using their, all their resources whatever to get them to work and whatever, get. yeah, whatever yeah. way they can. Yeah, I mean, you getting see screws and hardware and wheels from who knows what and, shopping and, carts, whatever the hell. Yeah, yeah, they they make their shit up. It's yeah. like it's like skating in the 90s. I'm sure you know people just customize parts from like fucking door hinges or you know yeah. just random yeah. shit. Yeah. These are my yeah. soul plates now. You know, like right. they do a lot of that. Yeah, they do a lot of that, but um. Yeah, that's cool. But, but plastic only lasts so, so long, long; it degrades, yeah. you know, and like, oh crack, you know, yeah. ten years into using a plastic boot, yeah. like, yeah, you're risking breaking your ankle, you know, yeah. like, or wheels. I mean, I, I, I said I've been to Cuba and I skated in Cuba, and like the ground is pretty rough <laughs> out there. I can imagine like the wheels going really quickly out yeah. there too. Yeah, they probably skate just plastic cores almost. You yeah, know, pretty like, much cores, right? I mean, pump. we've all been there eventually. Yeah, yeah, we yeah I've been there. Yeah, 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 I've been there. So. Save up my lunch money for yeah. a month, two months to get, you know, a pair of Senate wheels that would decor like in a week, you know, whatever. Because yeah, like, it was the bad ones at that point. Yeah. Liberty, yeah. Spikes, <laughs> Liberty Spikes that lasted you like one session. Yeah, <laughs> yeah one session is just like, yeah. fuck, dude, I got new wheels. I'm hyped, dude. Like, yeah. Got a couple grinds in on the ledge. You got half the chunk of the wheel left, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, it's so like, yeah. we've all been there. Yeah. They're, they're living that, like, on a day-to-day they basis. They live it on a day-to-day. So. Yeah, day-to-day. Like, it's it's like they were, you know, like how we went through when we were kids, you know, decord wheels. But they, they're they grown-ass men like, with decord wheels, you know, yeah. or women. There's women that skate over there, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, just, yeah, <laughs> it's tough, yeah. How did you get into skating or introduced to this uh this whole world what at what year what was your first video was there a person that brought you into it and what was like your scene in miami like yeah um that's a really good question because when people think miami i think miami has always been like like this hub of like inline skating right like yeah. people think it's great you know like but when i got into skating um inline skating in miami was relatively dead it was like 2005 2006 um so i think frankie was still skating but like, I really, you really wouldn't see pros like that. You know, it wasn't like, like, you know, like what they made it seem, I want to say. So when I started skating, it's my friend Carlos and my friend Jonathan that I went to middle school with. I was in eighth grade and they would skate to the school. And then my friend Carlos would like bust out a 360 like every once in a while. And I'm like, yo, that's sick. Like, yeah. like I want to learn that. I didn't even know how to inline skate, like, or even quad skate. I didn't know how to skate, skate. how to move forward on skates. And then I bought, um, I think went on skates.com you know like where would you get skates skates.com is where you get skates you know (laughs) as a kid yeah that's like you know i don't know any what websites you know we we was that a real thing yeah skates.com is a real website yeah (laughs) yeah it's a real website yeah you could they still have like old volos in there like the like the maroons or whatever it's like who's running skates.com i don't fucking know some dude who doesn't skate (laughs) yeah exactly yeah but they got that name you know skates.com where do you buy skates Skates skates.com you know that, that's an yeah. interesting way of yeah. like going about it like, yeah do do? like a very just logical where could i get skates skates.com yeah, is where you buy fun. skates um so i got my first pair of skates were genesis twos okay uh, but they're like a hundred bucks you know like well, even, that's skates.com discount yeah skates.com <laughs> discount a hundred bucks like but even to that my yeah that's like that was tough for my mom like 100 bucks you know oh, yeah. twins i got a you know 100 bucks for me 100 bucks for my brother it's 200 yeah. bucks so you, you both know started like, skating yeah we both started skating like I think he started like a couple weeks after me like mm-hmm. he saw my skates and he's like I, i'll get some too mm-hmm. you know like yeah because uh carlos and jonathan I'm out, i was in classes with them and then my brother met him met them through me like, like we're all great friends now like like they're actually going to be here um this weekend and that's going to be like very emotional for me like yeah that's cool yeah it's gonna be crazy Big reunion <laughs> yeah it's crazy they still live down in miami but 
it's like oh those people got me into skating you know like mm-hmm. yeah but them too yeah jonathan and carlos and then and then franco which was also their friend he was all he was like a little bit older he was already in high school um he has such a just like steezy style for skating like i think that was like my first experience of what like style was in skating you know and like first video was probably that one or first section was that brian shima section with that hurricane bob dylan song i don't know then i don't know what video it was Closer? yeah Closer? maybe yeah. Um, yeah i think so yeah, yeah. yeah that was it. and then billy i was really influenced by billy skating like oh, ttps yeah dude yeah. i see yeah that. yeah ttps yeah yeah yours and, and dre powell yeah dre powell, uh, yeah i want to say dre powell is his skating really influenced me you and dre powell and then shima he was just fucking crazy so i'm like this is sick you know yeah like, yeah Th- those were and then and then i think that after that was like eric bailey like, I really like this style. Yeah. Like, I started learning sweat stance and, like, you know, just, like, Eric yeah. Bailey tricks, you know. Like, like I was never good at park skating because we never had any skate parks in Miami. But, you know. Really? Bailey had a street yeah. a street style, you know. But he knew how to skate bolts. Or he still does, I'm sure. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's, yeah, my first video was that one Brian Shima section. I torrented it. And please oh, don't, right. please <laughs> don't hold me liable for that. I was a broke 13-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was like just so torn. Did you look up to like Frankie being from Miami and everything? Um, maybe not at maybe or maybe not like that, at you know? maybe not at first. There was always like, like okay, Frankie was always really sick. Like he's always like, yo, like Frankie's fucking sick. Like my friends liked that kind of aesthetic a little bit more than me. My friend Carlos like bought Rems, you know, like like Dickies, like super baggy Dickies, like a tank top, you know, or, like a white one, you know. It's just like you know, it's like a different aesthetic. Um. I don't know. I, I just like, I couldn't really like, like kind of, I think I went more for the styles that fit my body structure in a way like Frankie's like a little bit shorter than me. I have big thighs. So it's kind of hard for me to even get low on a top. So, cause like my legs don't, you know, I have big thighs, thighs short legs. Yeah. I got the thunder <laughs> thighs. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, like I'm like short, but like I'm built different, you know? So it's right. like, I think I went more for skaters where it's like, Ah, I think I could do this, you know, like, like my body is like, you know, Something like, more yeah, yeah, you. yeah. I think Frankie's TTPs, he was really sick at them too. Like he would go fakie, like on a down or full cap TTP. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so that, like that, I was like, yo, I could probably do that someday, you know? Cause it's like, I was very good at like six months into skating, seven months, I was doing TTPs. Were you? Yeah. Both ways. Really? And I'm just ways? like, yeah, I'm just like, I'm just like, why can't I do it both ways what? that consistent anymore? Yeah. Two spin top acid both ways. I I didn't learn front rails though. So like <laughs> I could barely do a soul grind. Yeah. I'll fall I'll fall on a soul grind still to this day. Really? Like, yeah. But true top acid both ways. True yeah, true top, top acid ways. both ways. Uh, true top acid both ways. I feel a little bit uncomfortable now with my left foot, but I'll still try it. Like, yeah. you know, if it if I need to, I'll try. Mm-hmm. You know, like right. there's times where you're just like, I feel like I need to do this, you know. And Did you, you just, just see like someone do a TTP and you were like Dre Powell. And, and you were like, This is the trick. Dre that Powell I have for to TTA. Do? Dre Powell for TTA. Billy for TTP. And then and that yeah. made you skip like Royale. Yeah, <laughs> so just my go first. To that. Yeah, my first grind was a uh, star grind. Um, okay. So that was my first grind, and then after that. That was your first grind, star. Yeah, star grind. I never heard that. And then like I the first. Yeah, and then I learned. Usually like a Mizu Mizu front side or Mizu or yeah. Maccio yeah. or so, so. Yeah, and then I learned, and then I learned. Star is like more of a commit. Like you're like like on it. It's not like yeah. you know like a Mizu you can stay on the outside. You're like it's so. twisted. I think it doesn't say yeah. much of a beat. Yeah. That's trip. cool though. But I'm short, so it's like it was easy because I just brought my legs up. You know, there wasn't much jumping involved. You know, no, though the ledge was like knee high, but yeah. And then my second grind was probably front unity. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> front uni- so all over front the unity, and crazy. then I learned back royale, and then I learned switch or top sole with my left foot. And it's like those were my first four grinds. Whoa. Yeah, and then I learned Mizu, and then for some reason I just started doing like true spin top soles. Because of my back royale. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's like, you know, I just, it felt kind of easy. And then, like, top acid came. And then, like, top sole with my right foot. Like, that was, that maybe came, like, eight years ago when I started feeling comfortable with that. Like, so, I'm 30 now. And I started at 13. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I had a weird. And since I never had a pro to influence, like, my friends and I, we just learned from each other. We started from, like, nothing. Like, Carlos and Jonathan and... Franco, my other buddy Gabby, like they were the better ones, you know. They but like, just, like from like no influence, no YouTube? influence, so like not watching videos, no. <laughs> oh, we had videos, but it's like, but like, no one like present. No, there. no present, yeah. zero presence. Yeah, wow. we went to the first time we saw a pro was Frankie, of course. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. When we went to, um, my mom would take us to a skate park called Brian Piccolo Skate Park. Oh, Brian Piccolo. Piccolo. Yeah, yeah, it's like 45 minutes north of where, where I lived in Miami. Mm-hmm. And then there was this fucking tour bus. And this is fucking mm-hmm. hilarious. We're, we're like on the turnpike, I think it was, too, on my way to Brian Piccolo. We see this tour bus. Like, we're always joking around, like, you know, like, uh, we're like, yo, that's Frankie on the tour bus, like, laughing, cracking <laughs> yeah, jokes, yeah, yeah. and it, it ended up being that it was Frankie on the tour yeah, bus, no. yeah, yeah, it was funny, because it was, like, literally, like, almost when we got on the, the turnpike, which was, like, heading north to Brian Piccolo, and, like, we saw the bus, like, I think it was even on 8th Street, where, like, my mom's house is at, and, like, yo, that's Frankie, you know, cracking jokes and shit, and then, like, we get over there, and it was Frankie, and I'm like, holy shit. Like this? I don't know. Yeah, this was 2006, 2007. So it's like, yeah, he was still skating TRS. Oh, I know that wow. much. Yeah, I got I got his autograph on this bloody ass shirt that I had. And like, I kept it under my bed. I don't know what the fuck happened to that shirt. But <laughs> I wasn't a park skater. So you could imagine that when I left the skate park, I was all bloody. You know, I didn't even know how to drop wow. in. Like, yeah. like, we didn't have anything in Miami. It was just mm. like ledges and barely any down rails. Like, down rails were high because mm. it's like, it's not hilly. Like, mm. yeah. a lot of handicap rails, but it's like... Jesus, for a short guy like me, yeah. like I don't have any muscle. You know, I didn't have any muscle at the time. You know, yeah. I'm just building. I just got into this. So yeah, it's yeah, that's my first pro experience meeting Frankie at Brian Piccolo Skate Park. Just like super cool looking. Like mm-hmm. yeah, like two T's on and like yeah, it was just like you know like that like that pro like like oh man like even without watching him skate, you're like this guy's a pro. You know, yeah, like, he's like, like a larger than life character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frankie. That's why he was he's like a, a video game character, but he's legit like a character. Yeah, right? you know. So that was my first yeah. experience. They didn't quite fit like, you know, my aesthetic or anything, but it's like I appreciate all forms of and aesthetics in skating. Like, like yeah. So I loved it. I loved the fact that I met Frankie. You know, like. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there was anyone else there. Um, I was about to say, who else would have been there if it was like a, a tour? If there was like a it, bus, other I people think it was like have. an M1 tour or something. It was during oh, the M1 oh, times. M1, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It was during the, the M1 times. So maybe Jeff Howard might have been around. Cause... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Jeff Howard mm-hmm. was there. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, they all had a similar aesthetic, you know, yeah. like same like clothing, you know, like in a way. Like in line skating, a lot of a lot of people that skated at the time had that that similar kind of aesthetic, like super baggy tee, you know, mm-hmm. super like baggy sweatpants. pants, like sweatpants, yeah. yeah. Which was sick. It was a really cool aesthetic. It was a I uniform just, for a while. Like, I think Blading yeah. went through a, a few phases of like uniforms. Like this is right. what you wear <laughs> yeah. if you're a skater. And then I think it got to a point where it started kind of opening, opening up. up yeah. yeah, which is, I think that time it was one of those, the uniform times. People were kind of scared to do something different at, at one point in skiing, I think. And then slowly people started breaking away and we got these little clicks. But yeah, we're at a point now where there's just so much variety. Like us three here together right now. All dressed completely differently. Yeah, too, we you know really what I mean? are. So, yeah, we really are. Holy this is like a perfect example. Yeah, this is a really too. good example. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's interesting. Uh, but that's the <laughs> beauty of our sport and what we do and who we are as people. Yeah, I really like the. I'm really proud of what inline skating has become over the years. I want to say, like, like I go out to a skate event and I'm like, yo, this is so cool. Like, mm-hmm. everyone in my heat has a different style in skating. It's like, I feel bad for the judges. But yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, how do you fucking judge that? Good luck. You know, yeah. like, like, yeah, but I, I really like um, what has become of inline skating. Mm-hmm. And, and there's still a lot of growth, but I think we're heading in a pretty cool direction. Yeah, so. No, I really, I really have been enjoying like the growth of it too. Just like all the different styles and like the different ways you can go. I mean, it's it's like at the beginning it just seemed like so few ways to go, mm-hmm. and then now it just seems like uh, whatever kind of person you are, or personality you have, um, skating has something that can accommodate that. Yeah, you know, like there could be like you want to do like the huge tricks, like and like that's sick, like get the adrenaline going. You can do that if you want to like be art artistic, and you know you're starting to see flat ground be an option, mm-hmm. and that you see like people like. Well, Alex has been exploring like different areas with the toe rolls for a while and opening up doors there. But, you know, you see even like Dominic Bruce with like the different things and, you know, Danny Beer on like uh, skating just flat ground a lot of the time. And right. it's it's just cool to to see all the doors that are opening. I agree. I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. It's it's a very just something beautiful to see, you know, like sometimes I don't even want to compete at a competition and just like watch it, you know, like, but I feel like maybe I only have like four or five years of my prime time and you know my body like you know he starts degradating without you know hey man it yeah. you know it depends how you treat it it depends how you said you're 30 yeah. yeah i just i just hit 30 in june so some yeah. of my favorite fighters you know 
42, 43, and they take, you think we take abuse, they take some. Yeah, yeah they so do. I think. Some hits, right? And, yeah. you, and we, can, we can adjust the way we skate. You know, I like, I'm picking up a lot, learning a lot from Miguel. Like, he has his own injuries, but he, like, is on a mission to skate as long as he can and as efficiently as he can. So, like, me, who formerly did, um, like, about a big kind of like I guess cavemanish type gap. <laughs> <Caveman>. <laughs> just, like, just, like, yeah. just like go throw it right. Yeah. But, like I'm starting to like look at that and be like, oh, that's cool. Too. That's how I can do this for the rest of my life. Kind yeah, of thing. I mean, yeah. d- adjusting and adapting. Yeah. Do you really think you're in like your prime though, or like, or, like no? I think I think in 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 one year I might be in my prime. Um, I think 35 is a good prime. I think. Yeah, they, he, they, he's getting pushed back more. I think too, and like so I didn't, true. I didn't really hear about you until recently, the last few years. You know, yeah. so like late twenties to like thirty, and I feel like that is instead of how it was maybe when we were younger growing up, it was like fifteen to like twenty was like the prime era. Now it's like got pushed back ten more years, yeah. and that seems to be like the average now. But you're thirty years old. You're not old or young. But mm-hmm. I see you at contests, and you you go in like yeah. you have like a fire, and it's so so weird because you're so you seem so like calm and chill now. But like you're completely different when you're skating at a contest. You yeah, know? I get really emotional. Where does that come from? Is that is that just emotion? Like where yeah, does that it's come literally from? emotion. Like I see my friends like cheering me on, and I'm just like yo, like like what kind of emotion? Like I get like I don't know, like I get everything. I go through all the emotions, like intense emotion. Yeah, yeah, I go through all of it, and I'm like. And then that's when you see me like just super focused, like almost like that. borderline about to cry, you know? Yeah. And then it's mm-hmm. like, that's when I'm like in my zone, you know? Cause yeah. I get so emotional about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, yo, fuck this. I'm doing this trick, you yeah. know? Like, like the whole thing, like Demetrius, like shit, like he's such an incredible skater. You know, I saw him do that. So gap. Yeah, so can, yeah, can we get into that? Like, yeah, I, I, because I, I promised Demetrius I will. So okay, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's cool that he's, yeah. because, um, I like came to New York. I was in New York just before that event. Yeah. And then I saw everything go down. I was in Spain and then I came back and I was like talking to the New York uh, people who were at the event. They were like, yo, like Andrea was like on one, like he was <laughs> just like in the zone so yeah. everyone was just saying how intense like that experience was so yeah um i, I heard you and demetrius were battling it out yeah and, it was it was a very just like uh i don't know it was just a great experience and and thank you demetrius for helping me you know like like in a way pushing me to that level and although I, I i my friends pushed me to that level as well but it was mean. it was really interesting because there was that whole interview with with lewis and then i think that some things got taken out of context and then my lewis is like my little brother mm-hmm. so if anybody says anything about lewis i'm coming at them you get what i'm saying 100%, like like yeah. i'm like defending yeah. him you know more than i'd defend myself if right. somebody were to come at me yeah and then you know i never i never said anything rude to demetrius or anything but i know that he took personal the um and that's fine i take things personal all the time too you know like yeah. it's things that we all work on you know mm-hmm. it's normal and then i think it was more like people kind of like like just throwing at the fire, you know, kind of making it about Demetrius, Lewis's comment, which Lewis's comment wasn't a bad thing. If you look at the whole interview, he was just saying like, you could do hammers and I respect people that do hammers, but you don't have to do that. Just have, have fun, to. you know? Exactly. Yeah. It's up to you. You don't yeah. have to feel the pressure to do so. And like, I think that was like the message thing mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. It was a beautiful message, but yeah. people just like blew up and it's just like, like, why would you take, you know, like why would you take something so beautiful and just like make it about you, you know, mm-hmm. and like make it about what you want. Like this little fucking self-centered, you know, right. but whatever people blew up. And then I think that people started like tagging Demetrius or like sending him it. And then he's like, oh, I guess this comment's about me, you know? Oh, is that what happened? Sending it to him. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I understand why he took it personal. People yeah. were like sending it. Yeah. To him. It's just yeah. like shit. Like if some, you know, I didn't know that. Part that was other it, people man. doing it then. I yeah. Thought. Yeah. It's like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you starting fucking drama? You're in a fucking adult. Like chill the hell out. You yeah. know, like uh, everybody should be able to skate how they want, you know? And I respect hammers. I respect like flat ground. I respect yeah, everything in it. skating, you know? And I get influenced by all of it. Mm-hmm. So then Demetrius posted, posted something and then I'm like, yo, I think you should watch the whole interview before you write something like that. And then we, we talked back and forth and then I gave him a call. It was really interesting because um, I want to learn more about him. Hey, what, what is your train of thought when you go to disaster or something? That was literally my question to him. So, <laughs> so it's kind of funny that the competition came down to that, you know? Yeah. Wait, that was after or before the contest? This was before the contest. So when you were like trying to chat A couple days up. after no the way. Lewis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a week and a half before the contest. What? Or like two weeks. Whenever whenever Lewis's podcast yeah. was, with two be- about two weeks before the contest. I right? think that was right yeah. before the contest. Yeah, yeah, a week, like a week, because you were there a week yeah, before. Yeah. That was the week so, of the contest. So, so yeah. you asked this question, so you got to the place where you're like, you know, kind of asking him about his reasoning behind doing everything behind Lewis, and then you get to a friendly point where you're like, 
asking him like his perspective on like how he approaches yeah no, no it was tricks. it was a friendly point the whole time yeah, okay. it was like we we're learning from each other because it's um i think that there's maybe four generations in skating and then i think that demetrius belongs to generation uh three um so generation one i would be like uh, tracy white and mm-hmm. like the older folks and then generation two i'd almost throw in like john julio in there mm-hmm. and then three would be like you guys you know mm-hmm. and then four would be like the new school which mm-hmm. is us you know like i think that that's where it falls i could be wrong you know that's i don't know much about skating mm-hmm. i'm still learning about it so to me it was really interesting like how do you just like disaster on something i know i have the physical ability i know my body could handle that but how do you put yourself in that mindset and then his reasoning was completely different than from what I would do, but it was just awesome learning from him and just hearing his feedback on that. He said that he just kind of like clears everything in his head. And it's like, I don't do that. I like use all of that. You get what I'm saying? Like I use all of yeah, my emotions. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm fucking going. Like <laughs> yeah, I'm no. going, do you know? Like, yeah. like You're I'm, full charge. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, Hector's over there fucking watching me, waiting with my water. Yeah. Like, like, you know, my <laughs> other buddies over there, like fucking just like expecting me to kill it, you know? Yeah. Like I'm one of the only Hispanics here. You get what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like, there's just so much there, you know? And it's like, and technically, um, I guess whenever I'm considered pro, whatever that means in inline skating, I'm going to be the first Cuban pro because I was born in Cuba. So that doesn't exist yet. Mm-hmm. So like if I ever get a pro product, I'd be the first. I don't know if that's necessary to be a pro in inline skating. I don't think it is, but right. this is another check off the list kind of thing. You know, like yeah. maybe it does fall under like, oh, to be pro, you got to do this, this and this. I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. I don't right. know. What, yeah. But, you know, I think of that and I'm like, it'd just be sick. You know, Frankie's there fucking watching me, you know, like he's standing there with Steph, which I grew up skating with. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like, you know, there's just a lot of emotions behind it. And then... When I get to New York, Hector and Augusta are just laughing. So I stayed with, with Goose that night, or the, the, my time there, and Larissa. And I and thank you for letting me stay with you guys. You're, both of you are very, very sweet and just welcoming. And Hector and Augusta are kind of like giggling. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? And then Hector's like, haha, you're going to battle it out with Demetrius this weekend. And I'm like, where did you guys make this up? And then the next morning, I'd never seen the skate park. So I get there on a Thursday night competitions on a saturday and i'm like hector let's go to the skate park i just want to see everything in person on a friday mm. and then it just turned out that i skated every single obstacle that day you know and it's like i've never been there it's like i want to skate i want to test yeah, out the grounds yeah. i don't want to try to skate something with a bunch of people like i i have asperger's like i i feel like 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 i like i feel nervous and like I, it's, it takes me a little while to feel comfortable so it's like i really just do this when nobody's here when i'm with like one of my best friends you know hector's like one of my best friends you know i feel comfortable trying tricks in front of him like so it's like you don't want to, and also feel overwhelmed all the way leading up to it. Yeah, so I skated running. every obstacle, just did a couple of tricks, and then I got to Augusto's apartment or Larissa's and Augusto's apartment that night, and and then my comment was, I'm, I think I could win. Like, I'm going to win. Like, that was my comment. Like, mm. I think that Demetrius is probably going to be, you know, the one trying to kill it because he's, he's making a huge comeback, and that's awesome what he's doing, you know? Mm. So then they're cracking up because, like, they envisioned this already, so in the first heat, which were, or the first round was that high ledge. And then, like, they even extended our heat because, like, Demetrius was trying to land his true spin topsail on the top. I'm trying to get my TTP. And it was just me and him going back to back. Everyone else just stopped skating. Uh, you, you were ahead of head since the beginning. Then, yeah, since the, the beginning. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, we were in that heat together. But then, but then round two, we weren't in the same one. I'm sure we would have, you know, kind of backed each other up, which is right. kind of cool. Like, um, But in the finals, I was just in my own zone. I think I landed over 30 tricks. Damn. I did true spin really? misfit first try on that concrete ledge, true spin KG, just like those are hard to skate. Just like that ledge weird is hard to skate. tricks, yeah. But I'm dude, you had some seriously of yeah. my favorite. Like I, yeah. I really loved the one foot kickoff to Ali Fishburne. Oh, just like dude, 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 with, with, like uh, the rhythm behind the second it. spot. I think it was like you kicked it off with one. Oh, side oh and Ali fast plant, fast plant, Ali Fish with a grab the, against the fence with like, the same foot though. Fast plant, fast plant into the same foot with the grab. I was like, yeah, that was a really good one. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one to fail. I I messed up a couple times. You take yeah, you take a beating on that one for sure. It's. Yeah, I, 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 I just skated as me. Um, like, just did the tricks that I know how to do and just tricks that I love doing. And, and thankfully, I've, throughout my life, like, being a ledge skater, it's allowed me the ability to, like, just practice a bunch of tricks because I'm not necessarily thinking about grinding this thing very long, you know? Like, mm-hmm. those ledges are short, you know? It's mm-hmm. like, you lock on, you're at the end, you know? Yeah, you, you gotta got, lock. You gotta lock on yeah. perfect. <laughs> on a ledge, you gotta lock on perfect. Right. You fuck up, you're going yeah, down, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, so to me, it was like, eh, maybe I can't grind along rail various grinds, but a ledge, shit, 
I have like hundreds of tricks I could do on a ledge, right. you know? So it's like, it was very just like me. And then I see Demetrius do his disaster and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and then they're trying to end it and I'm like, no, nah, everybody get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I heard. Yeah, like, I heard you were like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yo, tell everybody to fucking move. Like, yeah. And that was, it was a big gap. Like, it was like, yeah. And I was standing you were from going from a full low speed. Yeah, I was that. standing from like a low like air, like I the ledge was over me, so I had to actually like like jump, bring my legs up, like I have think the, the right slow motion speed. clip. You oh, I I, I like it. I like dunk. It was a little with my wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like an, an inch or two shy of even of that. You uh, you just yeah yeah that would have like broke my spine. I wish I would have. So that ledge. I don't think you would have done that. You're, you that, seem like a that strong ledge, That ledge goes that like that ledge doesn't go straight down. It actually does this. I don't know if you've seen it. It angles a little bit. Oh, does it? Yeah, they do this. Those ledges do this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It does. They don't go straight down. Yeah. They do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. They do that. So like, so you're going so, straight at a ledge that does that. Yeah. Sideways. So it's like, so it's like, I, I, I wish I would have like locked on better. Whatever. It's fucking competition. No, in a competition whatever. Like, setting. And like that's it's such a short yeah. ledge. It was like, think. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. like no, whatever. especially at that speed too. Oh, with yeah. That going. The, that was a moment as well. Yeah. Was, like a real moment. The moment. Yeah. Heck, dude, when I landed that trick. You see my my friend Oliver like in the background like head banging just like hilariously. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You see like and the that, homie shotgun and beer in the back. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, like, you oh. see Hector running after me with this big bottle of water, that yeah. he, this gallon of water that he had for Sweet. me to like hug me and like kiss me in the cheek, whatever he was doing. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, you know, it was a big moment. Everybody's fucking yelling like, like you know, it's just like mm -hmm. it's the second time I end the contest with the last trick. So I did that at the riot this year as well. I got best trick. Yeah, I saw and that. Cops were there. I just fucking zoomed behind the cops. The disaster top porn on this like drop ledge thing. Mm. Like, yeah, no. So it's, I think that's the best feeling. Even if yeah. I wouldn't have won first place, it's just ending the comp with the last trick is always the best feeling. Getting yeah. people the most hype pretty much. Or making, yeah. or making like a, a thing that creates that yeah. kind of energy. Yeah. First place, like whatever. I'm glad. I'm glad I got first. <coughs> Um, it was. I'm sure it was very difficult to judge. Demetrius skated very, very good. Yeah. Um, and then Zach skated <coughs> very well. So everybody fucking killed it. You know, like yeah. being a judge is just a difficult position to be in. You know. Totally. It's funny because I had this one guy message me like, "Oh, don't you feel bad for Demetrius?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I feel bad that he got hurt, but like, like you know, I feel like I skated hard too. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. everybody skated yeah, hard. Everyone like it was in. up to the judges at that point. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, were you there? And he's like, no, I live in France. It's like, why the fuck are you? Why the fuck are you commenting? <laughs> yeah. Keep your mouth shut, dude. Yeah. No, but I got rude after. I'm like, I'm like, you know, like, <laughs> like, like keep your fucking mouth. You know, I get no, spicy totally. sometimes. Yeah. You know, like, hey, man. like, oh, this guy's coming at me. Like, yeah. he's, he wasn't being friendly. You he's, are from Miami. You gotta be yeah, spicy. Yeah. I was being a little yeah. naive when he com when he messaged me. You know, I was being a little too nice. I should have just fucking snapped at him right away. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But no, I only I got a few comments. You know, it's like if you weren't there, uh, fuck off. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I mean that, that that always boggles my mind why you would like send the comment to the person who would have won that. Like, why would you? Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's weird. But um, and then you got to put yourself in their shoes too. Like, you what would you have done? Stop skating? Like, you you would have done the same thing too. Like, you're at a competition to win. Yeah. Nothing else, pretty much, other than to win. Especially when you're in the finals too, because the finals is like. That's the best of the best. You've been skating all day, busting your ass. You're not going to just give up at that point. Yeah. You know, you're there to win. You're going to win no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's... It was um, just an incredible experience. Yeah. Just um, all my friends there from Miami, Pablo, Zach. They are just there competing with me. They're in the finals with me. They skated incredible as well. So, like, that's been the first time that I've made it to the finals with my friends. And I think that kind of hyped me up as well, you know, like the homies are there. No, though, I'll be honest with you. I was just hyper focused on what I was doing, but I know they were killing it as well because I would see them come off a trick and just like I clap for them, you know, like I didn't see what they did. They're my fucking homies. Whatever yeah. they did was sick, you know, like, yeah, like I have this connection to them, you know, <laughs> like totally. So it's like they're killing it. And then like, I think that that hype, there's just so many variables to why I get emotional and why that kind of is the source of like my motivation to try something absolutely stupid because that was a stupid trick to try like why, why would anybody try that that box was like when i jumped on that wood i felt to dig in and it's like why would i try this twice mm -hmm. i tried that twice mm -hmm. and i landed it i fucking rolled out super sketchy i'm like whatever like when i land my arms a little, i'm like i'm taking that <laughs> like i'm not yeah. trying this again like yeah. yeah i've had bad experiences in the past year where i'm like filming is different filming is like you kind of you got to clean it up you know you want it to make it look aesthetically pleasing but there's been times where i've just wrecked myself Mm -hmm. It's just like God. Like. Well, I, I think I think skating is emotional. Yeah, it's 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 an emotional experience. Like a lot of people use skating to 
channel some emotions or like energy and um <clears throat> when you're in those intense moments in the competition format and like you know a lot of people skating are you know just just a particular type of per- i could see that being very emotional i get i can relate because i actually get emotional in those yeah. like high intense moments in skating too where i'm just like yeah to the point of like almost tears like yeah. when you're even in battling out like a really hard trick or something that's like bring like making you get to that point that's pushing you or stuff like that it's cool to hear like it articulated like that yeah though. i i mean i cried when 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 they when i knew i was gonna get first place because they announced demetrius was like okay i guess i got first and i cried mm. i cried and i forgot who who recorded it and it's this is funny like is this you know like i you know it's fine to cry was that the and first it, contest that you won yeah it's the first contest that i won but it was just like it was just like wow like i could actually skate pretty good <laughs> you know like i never expected that from myself you know and, like, my friends have always been like, yeah, dude, like, you're one of the best skaters from Florida. And it's just like, well, like, I don't see it. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, I just see me as me, you know? And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, like, and then doing that, it's like, oh, I guess I am pretty good yeah, at validates, skating. You know, it's like, like, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, I guess I, I guess am. I am pretty good. <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess I'm all right at it, you know? Like, <laughs> like, and it's like, yeah, you know, like, because like, um, I think as a, there's, like, one thing that I want to say that most people battle with. And it's like, like sometimes and maybe in skating too like not thinking that you're enough for something you know like you know and that's kind of like a motivation to get you to the next level in something as well but i feel like a lot of people uh struggle with that and maybe i do as well and that's why i don't think that i'm that good at skating or think that i'm even at the level to win a competition against professionals that i've looked up to my whole life you know um so maybe that's why i don't know Mm -hmm. but definitely a lot of emotions there um just like going at that like full speed like and my wheels were old man i was using those wheels for four months because i like tiny wheels when i'm skating flat so like my wheels were like done like my bearings i hadn't changed like i don't maintain my skates at all like i'm the fucking worst at that i cleaned them this it's not time. very cuban of you yeah it's not very cuban <laughs> of you, I, guess, yeah. I cleaned them this time because i'm like damn people are gonna be looking at my setup and shit now you know because i just won a competition because people are gonna be curious now yeah, you know it's yeah. like fuck like i cleaned my skate with like an eraser like last night whatever <laughs> i probably hit it a couple times with the eraser, <laughs> the magic that, eraser. You know? like, yeah yeah like, see so each you don't do it but i don't do that shit i don't do that shit but now i feel like i gotta be a little bit presentable yeah, like a little whatever. Proper. yeah maybe yeah, yeah. i don't know got some coffee stains on my shirt. You know, <laughs> yeah, I see it, that, yeah. Fuck it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so what are, your, what are your expectations for this weekend then and, and Blading Cup now that you pretty much qualified to be in the pro division, right, for Blading yes. Cup this yes, weekend? Yeah. So what are your expectations for this weekend? Um, I'd, I'd like to make it to the finals, uh, which was my expectation for the Boshi Pope skate off. And um, I guess I'll see the course and I'll decide. But... But growing up in an environment where we didn't have uh, skate parks or just like very many obstacles besides just ledges to skate, it forces you to be creative. So like whatever the setup is, I'm sure I'll have fun. And then I think that having fun kind of drives the building up your confidence for the next trick Mm -hmm. and the next trick and the next trick and the next trick, you know, and Mm -hmm. then it's like, oh shit, I'm all of a sudden doing like true KG on this obstacle and Mm -hmm. this is, you know, dangerous. Like, so... Um, it depends. I guess I'll find out tomorrow what my expectation is. But I'd like to get to the finals. Um, you know, that'd be cool. It'd be really, really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we we were talking briefly before this earlier about like um, the transition when you decided to kind of make a, a a choice to do skating. That you were doing it as a kid. You said Miami with your friends. Mm-hmm. It was fun. It was kind of like organic and natural and. I, I guess you said somewhere along the way, like a few years ago, you there was like a shift in your thinking and your what you wanted out of skating. So you, could you get into that? Yeah. Um, so I I want to say that I was um, pretty confident in my skate. So I'm 30 years old now, and I was pretty confident in my skating like at 23. Mm-hmm. I was like skating very, very well, and I could send you guys some clips later on maybe. So you could see like at what level I was skating at at that age. And then um, I got laid off from my job at the time. And I'm like, fuck it, I got to go to school, you know, like, I got to make some money, like, I got to figure something out, you know, like, um, so I kind of just stopped skating and like, you fall off, you know, I gained, I gained some weight in school, which is normal, like, you know, you, I'm still, I still have the same eating habits that I did when I was skating, like, I'm still eating the same amount of calories, like, you know, you're going to gain some weight, which Mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. So once I finished my bachelor's degree, 
I started working and then I thought I was just going to quit skating. I'm like, whatever, like, I'm not going to have anybody to skate with in Illinois, like, you know, like right. Rockford, Illinois. So I move over there. And then um, two years after living there, uh, so I've been living there four and a half years now. So two and a half years ago, um, I was like in a master's program. I did about a year into it. And then like, I was just stressed out. Like I was like failing my, this one class. And it was a, a, it was a master's in science of electrical engineering, um, power and electromagnetic to be specific. Um, and it was like, I was just stressed out and I'm like, fuck this. I just want to skate. So then I dropped my class like in October and then blading cup of 2019 was coming up and I'm like, fuck that. I'm just going to get workout, get fit for blading cup and try to perform well. And I got second place in the open. And it's like, oh, shit, like, this kind of cool. And then 50-50 started hooking it up, you know? And, like, then Conjure started hooking it up. with So it's, like, so it's like two and a half years ago, I decided to just be, like, hey, I don't want to do my master's. This is kind of stressing me out right now. I want to see what it's like to push myself in skating. I want to see if, if I can make it, you know, like, whatever that means in skating, you know, that, that means something different to everyone. And that's fine. Um, but to me, I guess it just meant competing at a professional level being able to compete with the people that I've looked up to my whole lives in skating. And I was like, holy shit, I could do this. Like, and I feel like a lot of people could do that as well. You know, like you could just be like, Hey, I'm just going to push myself in skating and skate at this level. Like that's, yeah, there's a lot of efforts that I've made throughout the past two and a half years that got me where I am now. But I think that, um, a lot of people could achieve the same goal because I don't necessarily think that I'm talented at skating. I just happen to skate, you know, and the way that I'm skating now, I've been skating the same exact way since I was like 16, 17, except my style is a little bit more defined now, you know, my aesthetic and skating, but I've been able to do these same tricks since I was that young and it was hard to kind of get myself out there and get myself some exposure because social media wasn't a big thing back then. Right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the shift. I was just kind of like, I wouldn't maybe like some sort of depression, you know, like just kind of like unhappy with with just like taking this route of like, oh, just like working on my career, which is fine. I love my career. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like there's a time and place for everything. And I'll definitely go back to my master's program and complete it. But right now I want to take advantage of my body and just take advantage of the changes that I've made in my life and just continue skating maybe for the next three, four years and then. Maybe start focusing on my career again, you know, maybe start skating with a helmet. Like, I, you know, like there's mm. like, I, I don't think that I'm going to skate without a helmet my whole life. It's I think that one day I'm just going to wake up and be like, why, not, you know, why am I not putting on a helmet to go skate? You know, like yeah. I'm risking my career, everything I've studied for or whatever, you know, but no, right absolutely. now, right now I don't feel comfortable skating with a helmet. Maybe skate parks, sometimes I do it because I never grew up skating skate parks mm. and I'm scared of ramps. <laughs> so, yeah. and I know what you mean. I like, yeah. I definitely like consider that all the time. Like a helmet. U- using a helmet is super important. And yeah. definitely like you see someone, you should always encourage them to do it. But I know what you mean. Sometimes it could feel uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Looking fakey with a helmet on is just like, why is yeah, it on my peripheral different? Yeah. Like, you need like, some better <laughs> d- designed helmets. Yeah. And, and I like that full, like, bucket looking helmet yeah I you rock like a, that right. i look like a stunt man like, like, <laughs> yeah it's like evil yo, evil. Yo, it's yeah. like, yo i don't know what he's gonna do but he's gonna do something, <laughs> he's, gonna do something. he's wearing that helmet he's gonna, like, he's gonna do a fish bin like a shot out of a cannon yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <both>. yeah. all <laughs> i know is he's ready for action yeah, yeah. that's all yeah. i know yeah. uh, man i wish i would have brought it with me i would have just pulled it out put it on right. <laughs> yeah, like a prop you know you could have done it for round two the part two yeah yeah just bust out helmets and glasses i don't know yeah but um yeah, it's kind of the shift. Just like I was like, fuck, man, I've been skating more than half of my life. Like, why am I not putting in the effort that makes me happy, you know, or that I think will make me happy? You know, I think that effort changes every time. You know, it's like I get to this point. It's like, oh, no, this point makes me happy. I get to this point. And, oh, yeah. this point makes me happy. It's a dangerous game to play, but um, I'm definitely proud of myself. I want to say like to some extent feel like I could do a little bit more and I'm there's still a lot left in me. And one of the things that I really just want to do is like, um, and I've done this my whole life, is continue to push younger skaters like Lewis. You know, like, Lewis was like 13 when he started skating with me. Mm-hmm. I was like 18, 19. I was young too, you know, like, we're learning from each other, you know, like, mm-hmm. we're kids, you know, 18-year-old, 19-year-old, still, I'm still a kid, you know, yeah, like, I don't kid. know anything about the world. Yeah. And like, 
being able to do that and i used to get made fun of for for that like oh there comes yandy yandro with you know a bunch of little kids in his car and it's like fuck you dude like i'm trying to push the younger generation you know like these right. like white dudes from like you know <laughs> further northern florida is just like you you don't understand you know yeah, like yeah like you know like you really don't understand what it's like to see like a young hispanic kid like picking up skates you know and like you know yeah. like you feel connection right away there's yeah. culture there you know and totally. it's like i understand that you don't understand but don't fucking mock it you know yeah, exactly yeah and whoever it is that did that knows who they are you know yeah. like like so yeah let it be known yeah no and, and that's yeah and that's that's extremely <laughs> rude to do you know and like yeah and just kind of fucking weird like why yeah. why would your mind be at that thinking you know at that level yeah, of thinking no, you know it's exactly. just like other than like yo he's bringing around little kids to teach him how to skate that's fucking yeah, sick you know course. like yeah. yeah and it was like lewis Edgar, this other kid named Junior, and like just random like fifteen year old, sixteen year olds, you know, like they would pick up skating, would skate with me for like you know eight months, like whatever they'd quit, but whatever. Edgar still skates in Miami, and Lewis, fucking yeah, dude, I mean, I, he's gone. like my pride and joy right now. You know, like, <laughs> like I see Lewis and I'm like, damn, dude, he fucking did it. You know, yeah, like was, like was, yeah. I see him and it's like I'm happy. You know, like, uh, yeah. but yeah, I'd, I'd like to continue doing some of that. You know, just motivating right now. Um, Last younger skater I've been skating with, Eros, he's 21 years old, S Slovakian kid. He's living out in Chicago for like eight months. He went back to Slovakia like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, he's thinking of coming back. And uh, I'd love to continue skating with him and just like, like grow with him, you know, as a skater. Because I learned from him as well as he learns from me. And, you know, and like my buddy Cedric, he's like a little older than me, but like I've been skating with him. He's like my best friend in the Midwest. And like my buddy Jared, another one of my close friends. Yeah, but... Yeah, just continue pushing younger skaters and just pushing myself to, I guess, a level that I never thought that I could achieve in skating. That's, that's kind of what I'd like to continue to do with it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I think you're on a really cool path right now. Like, huge fan of your skating. And yeah. it's cool to see uh, you kind of come. Um, I hadn't known about you, like, I mean, a few years back. And seeing you come up how, as you are, like, lately with, like, yeah, and I really like like your you have a very methodical way to your skating. Like yeah. I, re I really like the just like approach to all things. Like it seems like you go through like uh, different variations of learning in the approach to stuff. So it's cool to watch. Yeah, and I just like do like different types of skating too, or at least try to. I don't I don't know if it. Yeah, I just like a little bit of everything in skating, but I do have like a methodical approach. Um, and when I'm filming as well. Like, I'll try not to repeat a trick or whatever, you know, just like, like, there's a lot of factors that I take into account, but it's definitely is a process in my head. Um, maybe it's logical to me, but <laughs> probably just messy, you know, if I mm -hmm. try to put it out on a board for someone to understand, you know, like, yeah. it makes sense in your head. Yeah, it makes but, sense in my yeah. head, you know, like, yeah, but I'm sure a lot, everybody does that in skating. Like, yeah. yeah, I was gonna ask that too, because you mentioned, we mentioned your contest mentality yeah. and why you get so fired up at contests. And I was curious if that translates over to your street skating or skating with the homies at the skate park or or filming or stuff like that because if you keep that fire going the whole time like that's that's fucking wild yeah, <laughs> you know what i mean that's dangerous i, I definitely <laughs> don't keep that going the whole time that that's dangerous that's how you get hurt you, you gotta you have to get burned like yeah that. you gotta know when to pull that out you know it's <laughs> right, like you gotta right. know when to use that you know right. you can't just be like yo this weekend i'm gonna go and fucking just yeah send it you know like because like, uh, yeah a lot of people who like <laughs> that's the reserves that's the reserve stash yeah, right? uh, yeah a lot of people who only know you from maybe contest which is like what kind of like i mostly knew you as yeah. a sk skating contest but like yo does he always skate like this like if he is he going to like chill at the skate park with his buddies like oh when I, you go to the skate park i'll meet you there and you're like <laughs> <laughs> like Mach 10 like like disasters on, yeah, on no, whatever I stay pretty slow at obstacles when I'm just having a <laughs> session I'll be honest with you it's the yeah. complete opposite yeah yeah it's the complete opposite I'll just go slow take my time fall laugh like you know mm -hmm. fall on a soul grind uh -huh. yeah, I fall on soul grinds a lot skating with Tracy the other day it's like 45 degrees where I live now and I'm like dude watch that me try to already? yeah watch me try to do a soul grind I just bust my ass it's like Jesus I can't do a soul grind to save my life what's it like skating with, with Tracy White then because you said he lives like five minutes from you. Do you does he skate often with you it depends um so Tracy has two modes he has <laughs> he, yeah no he, well maybe more than two but when it comes to skating is like two or maybe more I don't two know main. Yeah. yeah so it's like his distance stuff so he trains for that and then it's like his, let's go do aggressive skating. I don't really like calling that to me. It's all inline skating, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and right now he's he's aggressive, Tracy. And he's fucking sick. Mm -hmm. Like watching him skate the skate park is like, Jesus, Tracy, you got like, you got like 10 grinds down in a line. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, I want to be you when I'm 45, you know, like I think mm -hmm. he's 45 now. 
So it's very interesting. And then this in skating, I've tried to get into it. And I know I'll eventually get into it, but it's just like, I'd, I just can't. It hurts my feet. Like, it's just, and then I always have like filming in the way and like it tires me out and like my lower back hurts and like. Yeah, my back hurts too when I do that. Too. Distance, right? It's, yeah. It, and it's like, if you're filming a section, it's like you need four days of not skating to, you know, go out and get a clip if you do a day of distance skating, you mm-hmm. know, like to recover fully. Yeah, but it's interesting skating with Tracy and hearing his stories. Jesus, like, he just, like, grew up, like, you know, like, this time. And he lived in California and L.A. for a long time, I think it was. And, like, he just he has a lot of stories and, like, he knows everyone. <laughs> like, this is great to be around. Yeah. He's a good friend and a great resource. So <laughs> Yeah. I, I was going to ask you what, what, what that transition was like going from Miami to Chicago. Because as you were just saying, it's, like, now 45 degrees where you're where you're starting to skate and now we're just in fall yeah and you're gonna be approaching um a chicago, full winter. <laughs> chicago winters and miami is like the opposite polar of vortex i remember when i used to go down like you know i hadn't been to miami many times but the few times i did go down during the winter it's just like you know we were swimming yeah in, in yeah, the, still in, on the in, beach in, 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 in the bath water ocean it yeah. was like 80 degrees in the water so it's probably uh, has an effect on the skating okay um yes so i don't like skating outside i'm not as bendy mm-hmm. and people laugh when i use that terminology but i'm not as bendy <laughs> yeah. in the cold and i fucking hate it and um the skates that i was previously skating just kept on cracking in the cold so it's like that made me fucking i was sad i'm like wow like i don't think any skate could fit me i have like a wide small foot i i wear like a size six shoe but it's like my foot's kind of wide so it's like, damn, like what skate could I use, you know? And it's like that was kind, of, I was kind of bummed out about that. And it's like, I don't know, like I, I don't like skating outside. I'll be honest with you, I don't like skating outside in the cold. I have this little bench in my basement. My basement's about the size of this room that we're at, and like I just put it in the middle and I'll pump from one corner and get like a fish brain down or a top ass, you know? Like it's not a lot. It's not very good practice, but it's like mm. makes me happy, you know? Like there's no indoor parks by you. Um, there's one 50 minutes away, which is like a little bit south of me called the Cal or it's called Fargo skate park. It's in DeKalb, Illinois. Um, but that skate park kind of makes me depressed because it's like, it's just full of skateboarders. It's not that I have anything against skateboarders, but it's like, there's never inline skaters there. And like, everything is majorly like they have big ramps, but like everything's just like built around like skateboarding and it's a training facility specific for skateboarding so you could imagine it's a little awkward for inline skating because we flow differently you know i could use it um but that's the closest one and then we have another one in milwaukee called four seasons skate park and i've been going to that one to skate with my friend cedric and i've been learning a lot from cedric and skating because he has like a very like like when we go out and film he's like puts on his skates does one grind and he's like yo grab the camera i got this trick already mm. and it's just like what like you got this trick so it's like i like skating with him because it's like i want to be he's on it <laughs> i want i want to land tricks first try you know like i don't want to i can't be falling too much anymore yeah. you know? like nobody wants to fall like um so yeah i've been going out of my way to actually skate with him he just moved to milwaukee he was living in chicago before so that skate park is kind of cool and then they have a quad skating scene which kind of hypes me up too because i get i get motivated when i see people trying new things that are out of their comfort zone mm like that motivates me more than like somebody doing a disaster you get what i'm saying it's like wow that person's pushing themselves that fucking motivates the shit out of me Mm -hmm. even if it's learning how to pump you know on on a mini whatever like that motivates me so it's like it's it's been fun i think i've done it's not a display of skill it's a display of passion yes Mm -hmm. yes yeah and and courage Mm -hmm. too courage Mm -hmm. because like doesn't matter where you're at with skating whether you just got into it requires some some form of like you know some level of courage be like yeah i'm gonna go down this ramp you know <laughs> like mm-hmm. concept is foreign to far falling is foreign to a lot of people you know yeah the falling uh, part i think yeah. is just like so yeah so i've been skating that one four season skate park they got a lot of cool stuff there they got a really nice bowl they have like skate park flows nicely like because i think more bikers go there or they're 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 accessible to bikes so it's like some of the stuff is a little different and it flows nicely for inline skating as well as skateboarding and biking. I think that that park is a good and scooters they allow as well. So that park is a good like, hey, we're, you know, we want everybody to come to our facility. We're not catering to one group of people and quad skaters as well. Um, you know, so at least you have some options now, though, like as opposed to if you're going to tell me that you have no choice but to skate outdoors yeah. where you live in the winter, then you're like hibernating the entire time, I would imagine. Yeah, the- um, yeah, so last year I spent my winter down in Miami because I 
I've been working remotely for mm. a year and a half or like a year and more than a year and a half now. And um, but prior to that, I was actually traveling to Puerto Rico like once a month for work. So it's like even oh, during winter time, I'd get my yeah. fix. Yeah, get my fix of outdoor skating. It was it was amazing feeling and just like incredible. But I was doing graduate school, so it's like uh, skating wasn't as you know like. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, it's been. I get my fix. I travel down to Miami for a weekend and get my fix. You know, like yeah. But I, I don't do anything below forty. It scares me. Yeah. Below fifty used to be my limit, but now. I manned 60. up a little. Face and now it's, it's sixty. Up yeah, it's going it's up. Going up for you. Yeah. I just invested in the heat tech stuff, like the the clothes. You know, like Uniqlo makes them. I know Under Armour makes them. The heat tech yeah. pants yeah. and the heat tech shirts. Oh, you got to link me to some of that. You never, you ever got that stuff? But like, no. this is the first serious winter that we had in New York, at least, where we didn't have any indoor parks at all, nothing to do. So we had no choice. Yeah. So there was times where I skated and it was like twenty degrees. I just really wanted to skate, you know? It's yeah. like twenty degrees out, like nighttime is dark, so there's no sun or anything. But the heat tech stuff with the mask, the COVID mask, you know? Well that it, mask the, it the, keeps the, you the, the warm from your mouth. Oh, yes. I, that I changes just, like, everything. I, I, and yeah. it wasn't against the masks at all, especially during Until the winter. winter. Yeah. When I was working as a messenger, I had the mask on The like, best, right? So good. It yeah, changes yeah. everything, the mask yeah. in the winter. Anybody that's a top tip for anyone who's yeah. who's uh, in the cold and top trying to skate all winter. Yeah. The top tip, top as, as a jump tree skating tip, the jump tree top tip right there. Yeah, top tip, okay. Wear your COVID mask if you're, you're skating with it. Top tip, top tip. That's our top yeah. tip of the Ten episode. Ten top tips of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but that does help a lot though. And uh, uh, yeah, I was yeah. skating skating a lot more during the winter too. So maybe give heat tech a shot and the the mask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I gotta. I mean, mask. I'll I'll definitely do outside in the cold. But I haven't really had to skate outside in the cold very much it's only like 45 right now i don't know We're I, it's there. it's you really the not polar it's, vortex is it's, by you it it's not <laughs> i don't enjoy it though yeah it's, i don't enjoy it it it's takes tough to enjoy it takes the fun out of skating it does and like, warming up is the worst yeah it's, there is no warm-up yeah <laughs> and i've been and skating flat could hurt too because it's like you got to make sure things slide different in the cold yeah like wheels get so grippy yeah so it's like you get that wheel bite in and it's like a wheel bite that you're used to kind of you know like you know, you're used to kind of sliding on the wheels a bit, you know, but it's like even at that same angle you're used to sliding at, it's just like in the cold, like something happens with like metal, like square coping. I like skating like little square boxes and stuff yeah. like where it's like the material of the wheel, the urethane that they use just grips so well to that metal, you know, mm-hmm. it's like fuck, like, mm-hmm. and wax doesn't stick as well. It's the wax like, is different. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, man, I don't, I don't enjoy it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You were talking about uh, graduate school, mm-hmm. and I heard you have a very interesting career. What do you do? So right now, my role in the company that I work for, I work in the aerospace field, um, and I work um, in the design of electromagnetics for aircraft generators and motors, and the producibility end of that as well. So design uses uh, physics to give the customer a product that outputs something that they need for their aircraft depending on the inputs that they give us and the producibility side works with um kind of keeping production going hey we rent you know our suppliers having issues with this could you go and visit them and see what's going on in their facility you know like our units are failing this test in puerto rico could you go down and see what's going on over there so that's kind of like the you know like a quick summary of what i do for work yeah. hmm. That's, I don't understand that still. I, but anyone out there can translate, please write it in the comments. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I thought I'd be able to understand a little more by the end of that, but I couldn't. No, it was, but, a, it was no, a very I, simple. I, I, I know, I know it was very simple, yeah. and I appreciate yeah, that because yeah. that's probably the only Not chance simple, we had at understanding like, it. And we just didn't like get a very it. like like high level, just like this is what I do. You know, just like a very like like high level definition of what I do. Right. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. I love it. I've been I've been working with aircraft generators since I was 18, so I used to repair them. And then when I got laid off from that job, I was just like, I want to become an engineer and design these things. And it's been quite the um, just endeavor. Like, it's been amazing. And I'll transition off into something else in the future. I wanted to transition last year, but COVID happened. And now I'm like, I think I'm just going to do graduate school and then transition. Because mm-hmm. things are just changing, like, in a very odd, dangerous fashion. Like, I don't really want to leave this job where, like, I feel comfortable at and my supervisors are great. And, like, I could work remotely and kind of like, hey, if I'm going to go skating now, I'll just work a little bit later at night. You get what I'm saying? It like right. accommodates to my current schedule. But 
yeah, it's it's a very fun job. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It keeps me active and just thinking and like, yeah. And I've been able to apply a lot of the things I learned from skating to that really like, yeah, just thinking outside the box and like, yeah. And I get to work in Puerto Rico quite a bit, which is great. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's where yeah. I met Hector Tato oh, cool. and my buddy Paul and just like so many amazing skaters down in Puerto Rico. Yeah, shout out to Tato. He's yeah. in our backyard right now. He's in the backyard. <laughs> Tato is in my backyard right now. He's in my backyard right now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, no, that that that's really cool to, especially I bet uh, you know being in the Chicago weather, you'd appreciate getting yeah. that work trip out to Puerto Rico during that time. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. You'd be like, you need someone in Puerto Rico? I'll go. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Do you need to what go? this weekend? Yeah, I'm yeah, ready to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Totally free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it, it was like that. It was like just like. I'd be the person to be like, yo, you want to go to Puerto Rico? I'd be like, fuck yeah, I want to go to Puerto yeah, Rico. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Corporate card pays for everything. You know, it's like oh, you get to eat perfect. better than you've eaten. Yeah. You know, like, the food down there is not get, bad at, at all. Yeah, and then, you you know, corporate card for a big corporation is just like, dude, like you just it's eat big sweet. steaks. And like, you know, just like, <laughs> fuck it, dude. Like, whatever. Big old like, baked potato. Yeah, like, fixes. fuck it. Yeah, those yeah. people are rich, you know. Like, cool, of course. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, that's a write-off, bro. That's a write-off. That's a write-off. These big multi-billion dollar corporations are fucking write-off to them. So I might as well just enjoy it you know yeah, like totally why yeah. not um in a little bit we're gonna open it up for questions mm -hmm. we're gonna open it up for super chats because i know we have a lot of people watching us right now yeah. and everyone is engaging thank you for joining us live if you're watching us live please hit the like button um if you're not watching us live just hit the like button too that's cool and a comment cool whatever you want to do um but we're going to ask uh, Yandrea a few more questions, and then we're going to get into some questions from our live viewers yep. and the Super Chats. But, um, and like we say every time, we prioritize the Super Chats. So yes. if you do have a question, Super Chat it. We split donate half little money. our guests. Yeah, donate a little money. We split half it with our mm -hmm. guests. So you're helping us out. You're helping our guests out. Yep. You get to answer a question. We prioritize those. So I get to eat a big steak. That's the deal. If I get enough, you get to eat <laughs> a big steak. steak. <laughs> and, if, and if he wins this <laughs> weekend, oh, I get to eat a couple big steaks. Yeah, All yeah, the homies got big steaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. Steaks. Yeah. Yeah. New York strips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Tato's going to be in good this weekend. Yeah, Tato's going to gain some weight this weekend, dude. Tato, jokingly, he's my coach, but he's your coach. Yeah, we joke around about it, but tomorrow's my time or my turn to be his coach like he's gonna skate in the open i'm just gonna be oh, like yelling and like oh, nice. keep the same energy he has going on for me you know nice yeah so a lot of my homies are competing tomorrow and i'm that's gonna fucking motivate me it's so sick. much for sunday yeah, yeah. lewis is competing tomorrow yes. dude he's gonna fucking kill it it's so tight yeah yeah it's gonna be um yeah, it's, gonna, it's gonna, be, gonna be cool to see be fun mm -hmm. yeah tomorrow's yeah this whole weekend's gonna be yeah sick. i'm looking forward to um i forgot her name um south korean girl the she's young, like nine ten years old or girl. something yeah, yeah yeah i'm looking forward to her watching her perform i think that um she's gonna perform very well i just love watching like you know like the next generation skating me too it gives me hope you know yeah. like like whatever it is that i'm doing it's like someone else is gonna take yeah. over after you know like you, you were at the 2019 blading cup you said yeah, right? i was so sick that, yeah. how good was that was youth crazy. comp that was like yeah. one of the best comps i ever seen just not even youth comp just in general the best comp i ever seen he, one of those kids did that forward five off that box and he did like the shifty leg thing yeah, like yeah, halfway. Yeah. i'm just like like how do you gain the ability to control your body to that level at such a young with age? skates that are like yeah, too big yeah. for you because yeah. they don't make skates that small enough for skates that are bigger than his arms yeah, i love that <laughs> <laughs> that look is so cool yeah, yeah. i love that yeah. yeah no it's um yeah that's a that's an amazing like uh thing to be able to do like not only because skating could be like this journey that is a bit of the self it could be selfish at times or about you but then yeah. it's i'm such a huge fan it sounds like you are too just being a fan of skating mm -hmm. to be able to like i, I always say this like joker i've been saying it for years i can't wait to be like super like old and just kick mm -hmm. back on a lawn chair and just like watch <laughs> skating from the beginning to the end <laughs> like it's just cool to just be a fan and appreciate like all the different uh, things that Blade Cup has to offer. So, a huge shout out to John Julio again. We got right. a shout about every episode this weekend. Got it. It's the reason we're here. Tenth anniversary, and he works his butt off. And ten years already, too. Guys. And he brings all of us together. It's ten years so already. It's really yeah, this special. one's going to be big. This one's going to be really big. There's a lot of um, shout out to the quad skaters out this weekend as well. Yeah. You know, I think that there's a big community of quad skaters just kind of showing inline skating some love, and that means a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm really good friends with with tons of quad skaters. Roller that, Gooley? Yeah, 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 Carly, she, I, Carly. She's a Carly very, very good friend. Yeah, shout out to Carly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cedric, to Carly. Jared, yeah. you know, Pablo, Zach, everybody, Hector, everyone from Miami, and yeah, my buddy, 
the whole gang. Humberto, Carlos, Jonathan, Franco, Gabby. Just so many people yeah. that have are the reason why I feel motivated to skate. And yeah, it's just a lot of people that I've met throughout my life. Paul from Puerto Rico. Just so many people. Yeah, there's. I wish I had. I wanted to bring a big scroll and just like pull it mm, out, bust it list. out, and just mm-hmm. a fucking list of people to thank. You know, like probably wouldn't be big enough for yeah. a fucking no. Yeah, but yeah, there's a lot of people that have helped my just my journey and have made it a beautiful one. You know, like yeah, skating cool. does that. You seem heavily motivated and like inspired just throughout your whole, like you said, the whole journey through skating from when you were. Growing up, looking up to Frankie at, at, yeah. at, on the tour bus to oh, yeah. these, even like the contest this weekend, or speaking like Demetrius George and competing head to head with him at, at the BPSO. Yeah. Like, do you have advice for newer people coming into the sport, like what they should expect or how they could enjoy their journey as much as you are? Yeah, it's such a beautiful journey, and um, I I was very privileged to have a group of friends that were about my age, who none of them were skating at a pro level, and we were all feeding off of each other and learning from each other. So I think that that conditioned the way that I get motivated in a competition, that I get inspired by absolutely anything that anyone does. So that kind of conditioned my mentality of that. So one thing that I want to say is just like appreciate the little things in skating, you know, like if you see somebody learning a soul grind, like appreciate how difficult that is to them, you know, like and kind of, you know, feed off of that, you know. And once you do that, you're going to learn the trick you're trying to learn, you know. So like that's one very important thing is just like, appreciating the little things in skating like just like everything like mm-hmm. like wow that that person got into skating a month ago and they learned the makio today mm-hmm. you know, whatever you know like yeah. they learned how to ride fakie for a little bit you know like little things like that pay attention if you start appreciating that like it makes the journey of skating a very beautiful one and it helps create memories as well like you know like because you're like you're conscious about that moment and it creates a memory and like then it's like it's like a chronological thing almost. I don't know because not everybody's going to be as privileged as I was having a group of friends, you know, like four or five friends to grow up skating with, and none of you know how to skate, and you're all at the same level. You know, a lot of people are just like they see somebody at their local skate park to buy a pair of skates, and then they go out and they skate by themselves. You mm-hmm. know, and very difficult to feel motivated at that level, but appreciate every single step throughout the way. You know, like today I fucking. You know, I rolled without falling. I don't know, like mm. anything, you know, like, like learn how to appreciate that. Mm. Yeah, that's like one thing I want to say, like, just appreciate the little things in skating. Like, yeah, the micro things, I guess. <laughs> like, that's good advice. That's, yeah. that's good advice. I like that. Yanni, I feel like I could interview you for like <laughs> maybe. So long. Yeah. I was so actually good. nervous about this, but it's you guys make this very, a very just smooth process. So if there's anybody out there, if billy and austin reach out to you for an interview on jump street podcast i recommend to do it it's not as <laughs> it's not as uh, scary and as intimidating as you think it's going to be they're very welcoming and just like easy going yeah thank you that's awesome thank Appreciate you that. thanks for the putting out the good word for us yeah because yeah. i'm on sure there's show. people out there that mm-hmm. feel nervous to be yeah even like almost like, everybody like yeah. people that we've both been friends with for like many years yes yeah. and yeah. still i just met yeah. them today so yeah and it's Awesome to meet you, by the way. Yeah, really. definitely. Same thing. It's definitely a pleasure. pleasure. It's, it's great. Pleasure, yeah. Definitely. Um, I think we're going to open it up for some super chats. Yeah, we got we got some and bunch of questions and stuff, and we got a lot of people watching too as well. Engaged with us right now, so nice. I'm going to put out the word on uh, questions. Yeah, please. If you have any questions, let us know. Submit them. Like we said before, we prioritize the super chat questions. Um, if you are watching live please like this video and if you haven't already please subscribe to our channel we also have uh, another episode coming on in a little bit so if you subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon you get notified when you go when we go live so you won't miss an episode so definitely do that if you can we appreciate that and we'll get into some of these super chat questions you ready yeah i'm Not, ready yeah Andrea? throw them my way yeah. let's see we have first one from uh, I'm multitasking here real quick. Yep. From Yasmani CM. I don't know if I said that Yasmani right. Yasmani Castro. That's Yasmani, my buddy. there you yeah. go. Because the only Cuban American who drinks more coffee than foreign Cubans. <laughs> Listen, bed, bunny, and pray. He's my bro. <laughs> Love you, Yasmani. <laughs> the Y gang. Yeah, the Y gang. Yeah, yeah. you can't fuck with us. <laughs> he also said, he also had another super chat and said, 
I teach you both little Cubans. Love y'all too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's talking about Lewis and me. I guess a Lewis. Yeah, because yeah. Yasmani's the older one. Yeah, he's talking about Lewis and me. Yeah. Uh, I teach you both. Yeah, yeah he's he, we've we've looked, dude. Yasmani's fucking crazy. He's when I met him, I was just like Jesus. Like his le- the level of skating that he brought to Miami from Cuba is one of the reasons why I'm skating at the level that I'm skating now. And Lewis as well. Yasmani's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna 180 this fucking 12 flat 12. You know, like just like. Yeah, insane. Ring, First try, yeah. yeah. Just like, yeah, 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 get the camera, get the camera, I'm ready. Like, just running down, like, the street, just, yeah, like, wow. all this speed. Like, yeah, he's great. Love you, Yasmani. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, Yasmani. We have another super chat from Justin Thursday, who just says, Yandy rips. Thank you, Justin. And I have your skates, or, well, the soul plates on the skates, the Colts, and I have to kind of get to that I've been injured. So, looking forward to testing your soul plates out for the coats. It's going to be a fun experience. I'm going to make a couple little short edits, skating different obstacles, 3D printed soul plates. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Oh, I would yeah. love to see him oh, have like cool. a booth yeah, at cool. a booth at like an event so you can mm-hmm. see. I, see. I follow Justin on uh, Instagram too and, and Facebook, or whatever. And seeing all the stuff that he's creating, it'd be cool to see like a booth where he has like a 3D printer with him, like actually printing like a <laughs> yeah, frame or a soul so plate sick. while he has like his other shit on display. It might be, be hard because cool. it's temperature controlled and I don't know much about 3D uh. printing because I'm not like manufacturing engineer, but it's I know it's temperature controlled and I don't know if he could do it outside. Gotcha. And I'm assuming that um, what he's doing for skating um, maybe outside the environment outdoors might make it either too brittle or too difficult. Makes I don't sense. know. Yeah. Could just be for display yeah. too, though. But displaying yeah. all his things. And if anybody has a fucking idea, reach out to Justin. Like, he could probably work with you on something. I figured that there's a lot of people out there who envision things, but don't know how to put it, like, you know, how to model it or whatever, you know. And, mm-hmm. like, yeah, sometimes it takes two brains to come together to create a beautiful product. And it's awesome this world that we live in now where you can actually do that, like yeah. have an idea in your head and legit put it on the computer, print it out like that night and have like yeah. the model of like a frame skate or well, soul plate or something like so that in your the hand. the bottom of the frames. Yeah. The bottom of the soul plates. Yeah, so no, he soul plates like for the coats. Okay. Yeah, so like uh, I'll oh, show you. Yeah, I'll show you. I don't have it with me. But it'll be printing on the bottom, right? No, no, it's he three D prints the whole soul oh, plate. Whole soul plate. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The whole piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. So cool. Yeah, I want to break them in nicely, like on a concrete ledge first, mm-hmm. to see how they like react to mm-hmm. it, and like, and then go from there, you know, like, and then skate different materials or different obstacles that have like different grittiness to it almost, and kind of like record that, you know, like step of the process. Yeah. yeah. And Lawrence does that a lot too. He'll be like, hey, I have this idea with this wheel. What do you think? And I'm like, I love it. And then that same night, he'll like send me a picture of a 3D printed wheel, you know, just to put it on a skate so yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So shout out 5050 for always just keeping the industry fresh with new products. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's, he's always working on new things. So, yeah. It's it. it's, yeah. It's, Been around for a long time. Always thinking, yeah. always innovating. Yeah. He's a shout great out. guy. To, yeah. Ooh, I lost Barker. my mic. My Bob Barker impression Bob going Barker. gone wrong. We have a <laughs> super chat from Tree Tree Rudolph, who says the world needs more Yandis. Love you, Tree Tree. I agree. <laughs> Chicago <Nine> legend. <laughs> uh, was it nine seven? Oh, it was. It was nine dollars seventy six cents again. Nine seven six. Super chat from Jeff Metz. He says, "Good luck Sunday." Thank you, Jeff. And we have one more super chat from. Hang on. Judas Link, who says, Chicago loves Yandrel. From Young Bloods, use this. Wait. From the Young Bloods, use this to eat a good meal before the comp. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, Judas. <laughs> they, oh, that was a big one. $50 super chat, oh, too. Sure. So, hell yeah, he definitely wants you to have yeah, a good he meal. Wants me, he wants me he to, wants get to get that get steak. steak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I'll be able to get that steak. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I was a fifty dollars super chat. Thank you, thank you, Judas, for that. We appreciate your support. Um, do you have any questions, Billy? In there, um, I didn't look at the other ones yet. This okay. Um, they said okay. Here, I got one from Franco Sorella. He said, "What would you like to see more in skating nowadays? More recruiting of new people to skating? Care packages to Blader in Latin America? Just some suggestions in the question." Yeah, yeah. Uh, so all all of the above that you've stated, Franco. And I'd also like to see um, people be a little bit more accepting towards uh, different types of skating that what theirs is, you know, like, that's kind of cool. That's kind of what we need as a community, kind of support the ones in our communities right now. And then maybe by doing so, it would look 
um, better to kind of like the outside world, you know, and they'll mm-hmm. be like, oh, well, they're not judgmental, you know, like I know there's still going to be judgmental people out there, but they'll feel more welcomed to get into skating, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like we need that. So, that, yeah. yeah, I was also curious real quick, just off the top, because mm-hmm. you're so heavy, heavily focused on like the youth and bringing new faces into the sport. Is there anything we, that you think we could do to help? push that oh yeah more stop that giving, sport? yeah and and sorry billy stop giving older people pro products <laughs> just give it to the young skaters I'm, I'm old too you know at this point you know but yeah just do that you know like give marius a pro skate for them skates you know get, you get what i'm saying like like right. I, that's the kind of stuff i want to see because that, that will get a younger skater paid and that younger skater is is more connected to the the you know the 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 younger people looking at skating you know the 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 kids who are 10 who get into skateboarding you get what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. and it wasn't anything towards you by the way it was no. just like <laughs> like you know just a general statement like like yeah just give that pro product to a young skater i don't care if that person's been skating for 30 years i'm sorry like mm-hmm. like that's not going to help inline skating grow anymore like as mean as that sounds or as honest as i'm being about that it's like just give it to the young 21 year old 22 year old like 25 year old you know i'm 30 it's like don't even consider me you know they're i don't know i i, I think that if they're like you could be like 30 35 even maybe if, yeah. if there's like like i i think it's okay like yeah. just because especially if you're a new like like because even though you're 30 you're like a newer generation to it like and yeah i just think skating it's important to have fresh blood but i think it's also important to have the, those young kids there connecting with the and engaging with the younger people but it's also good yeah. to have it's a case by case scenario i think so because yeah. i'm i'm 30 but i'm still considered fresh blood in a way yeah because now is when people are getting exposed to my skating yeah so that's definitely a case by case scenario i know i made it as just like a general statement mm-hmm. but it's definitely like a multi-complex yeah thing like you know there's not like one rule you know but yeah. like um like to generalize it young people getting pro products would be kind of sick mm-hmm. and that would motivate outside younger people to get into skating mm-hmm. yeah i like that we got like one or two more questions here but i got a question of my own mm-hmm. uh, you you actually look when i first saw you skating i, I was like this is the rollerblading version of uh, my old bandmate nico do you, okay do you know nico oh shit <laughs> no i don't he was know like Nico's. the skateboarder that used to be in like the shredweiser video oh yeah that guy was sick yeah you never saw it yeah, like, so but sick. like you look very much oh. like him and people told him back in the day that like all the time they're like you look like joaquin phoenix do you, yeah. get, do you get that yeah well? I get that a lot. I'm like, he, he got that all the time and like you yeah. guys look like yeah. twins it's a trip yeah i get that on like all my instagram posts <laughs> almost like i get like yeah. a couple people commenting you know like i get it a lot i get it a lot definitely your skating yeah. is like also like i think like i would go as far as to say and i hope you don't find this mm-hmm. to be offensive no no don't it's just it's just like a, a funny observation that i'm taking <laughs> We're in the middle of a podcast right now, so you can play. <laughs> Anywhere you want. Yeah. Our next guest is early. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere you want. Whatever you want, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so, um, I kind of lost my chance of thought there. Oh, yeah, but it's, um... Not only do you have that, like, Joaquin Phoenix look, like, I think there are some points where you can actually, like, come off, like, a little bit of, like, Joaquin in, like, the Joker movie, but, like, but, <laughs> yeah. like, but like a strong one. Yeah. It's, like, he looks like a strong yeah. Joker because, like, when you're going at the trick sometimes, the focus, like, the level of just, like, intensity when you're yeah. skating at a trick, at, at times could even, like, looks, like, menacing. Like, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. really sick, the intensity. Like, it's really, I think, engaging if you're watching it. So I'm, like, always, like, engaged with your skating because you seem very engaged yeah. in the trick itself. Which I think is, that, I think that, yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. Like, you, you notice, you're focused on that, you know, it's like a detail. And I think a lot of people have mentioned that about my skating. And it's like, I don't know, that's just how I, I get emotional. I love it's that. crazy because, like, right before I get like that, I'm all, like, smiley and goofy. And then all of a sudden, it's like my face shifts and I'm yeah. like, I'm ready, you know, like, mm-hmm. I'm ready to do this trick, you know. And then I'll land it and I'll get all smiley and goofy again after <laughs> yelling, fuck yeah, because I always yell, yeah. fuck yeah, yeah, or, like, something after doing a trick, you know, it's just, like, automatic. I'm yeah. just so hyped and, like, you know, in the moment. But then I get all smiley and goofy. Like, I'm, you know, outside of that, I'm, like, always just, like smiling all the fucking time joking around like yeah i can tell by this yeah yeah alone because yeah. like i said all i before all i know for you is like contest stuff and you're like in the zone like on fire yeah like your eyes are like you know you have the fire in your eyes and everything but like here you're just smiling yeah. like soft-spoken like super polite intelligent like it's like 
you're a different animal when you're at a contest. <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's um there's yeah, I'm always generally speaking like I'm always smiley and just kind of goofy and like joking around, but there is a serious side to me and emotional side. You know, like it depends like. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, I've gotten that a lot, Billy. Yeah. It's I do that. All right, let me. That was that was my personal thing. I was like, let me not. I uh, have like two good questions let me here. Not, if you're, yeah, do you have anything? Lined no, up? go ahead. I, I, I have, yeah, I have two good questions. This is a quick one. I think a quick one, but it could be relevant. Who knows? Who knows? I talk um, a lot. So, uh, Leslie Brom said, "Are mm-hmm. he goes, oh, Leslie goes the pants? Yeah, that's a good are those to benefit his big thighs, or do they just feel mad comfy? Both." <laughs> really? yeah both it's just it just works you can't fall on them too much because they'll rip but um it definitely benefits like my body structure in a way because mm-hmm. they're like baggy enough and just kind of flowy and fun to skate in mm-hmm. but like it fucking hurts falling on these and they'll just rip right away you know so right. it's like yeah but it definitely benefits my body shape i got big thighs yeah so anything <laughs> anything tighter than this i'm like limited you know like bringing mm-hmm. my legs up or whatever it's like yeah i, I was doing jeans for a while but it's like like it was good, but it wasn't like optimized efficiency. I don't yeah. know. That's kind of dorky to say, but like I feel like these dress pants is just like efficient. works. Yeah, it's yeah. just efficient, nice and light. Yeah, yeah, and it looks good. I like the way it looks too. It looks great, yeah, man. I like the way it looks. We got a lot of pants talk in these last episodes. I mean, uh, <laughs> pants has been a, a main subject of uh, yeah, I guess uh, skating so. for many years. Yeah, yeah. skating ro- revolves it's, around it's pants. A pants. It's a huge deal. The it's pants. a pants sport. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pants thing. Yeah, it isn't about the skating. It's about the pants. No, it's totally about the fashion. Yeah, just. We have one more question. I think we could probably leave it we after this. We have a this. super chat. We have a super chat well. that came in. Michaela Petroski. Uh, okay. Um, she said, as always, I don't really have any questions, but looking forward to seeing you, Yandi, at Frankie's Comp on November 20th. Nice, Michaela. I'm looking forward to watching you compete at the Bladies Comp as well. Like, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. There's a lot of people that are going to Frankie's Comp November 20th. I'm going to be there, nice. and there's a lot of people going. So if you have the opportunity to do so, I would recommend to go. It looks like it's going to be big. A lot of yeah. people asked me going, and I was like, oh, if all these people are going, it's going to be a big event. Yeah. yeah. I so mean, that, and it's his first one. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but yeah, I think got to support Frankie. Yeah, you got to support him. Yeah, he's 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 made it. He's made inline skating big in South Florida and just like he's trying to bring it back, you know, like we we we've had our own scene there for some time now, even before he moved back. But like. He's trying to open it up to the outside world. So the more people that go to this contest, the more people walking by, you know, downtown Miami or driving by are going to be like, yo, what's going on over there? And they're going to enter and watch. And, you know, and like that might get the next generation into skating. I don't know. So, Absolutely. No, honestly, yeah. like I, I, I completely respect that motivation. Mm-hmm. And if you can make it out there, I saw tickets out to Miami to less than 200 bucks from almost anywhere in the country right now. So Yeah, if you can, that's if good. You can make I wish I wasn't working. I'd be yeah. there in a second. Especially if you're up in those places getting to be like 45 degrees. Oh, yeah, you need an excuse get, get to go down. Cold yeah, go to Miami. Bit. It's not It's not going to rain during November 20. Like, it's not going to rain. I mean, weather be perfect, too. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be like 80, be nice. 70 degrees. You know, like. Okay, I think this is a good final question to take from our audience. Uh, South Coast Media Productions asks, question, if you could choose a group of skaters to tour Cuba with making a skate video, who would you choose to skate and or film? Thanks for the podcast today. That's Um, a fun question. That's a good one. So filming, I want to say that like a lot of the people that I skate with now are very good filmers, like um, Pablo Porta, which is in your backyard right now, hanging out Mm -hmm. with everyone. Mm -hmm. He's a very, very good filmer, Um, but he's also a very talented skater aside from being a filmer so just kind of like um pablo zach buddy cedric jared Eros, just like a big group of people man like all my homies anybody that could make it you know like if you could do a soul grind and that motivates you and that pushes you i'd love to you know tour with you you know what i'm saying like it doesn't yeah. like yeah and all the skaters in cuba yeah there's there's a lot of skaters over there in terms of spot yasmani would have to be included there because he'd be like our tour guide in a way you know and he fucking just kill it at huge spots and nobody else wants to do so <laughs> yeah just everybody in our crew could film and everybody in our crew could skate pretty well so yeah i think yeah shout out poppy's crew <laughs> sick yeah we're working on a poppy's three video <laughs> Poppy's. Yeah, Poppy's three. Yeah, we did a one. Damn. We're just skipping two. We're going. Oh, I, skip, to I was about to say I only heard of one. I love yeah. that. Yeah, we're skipping, <laughs> yeah. skipping two all together. Yeah, skipping two. Fuck That's that. <laughs> number two. Dude. Yeah. I love that energy. Yeah, we're skipping two. Yeah. If anybody wants to know where two's at, don't worry about it. Don't worry. About <laughs> it. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. 
Well, I got to say, this has been like an extremely illuminating, interesting, fascinating uh, podcast that exceeded yeah. my expectations. I already had an idea it would be good because just the few interactions we've had, I've been able to tell like you're a very thoughtful and uh, conscious person and thinker. So it was uh, cool to have you show some of that today and tell some of your story and some mm-hmm. really intense and all kinds of levels of stuff. Like went from like I loved it. Really, yeah, it was mm-hmm. really good. But yeah. uh, so thank you. But I would say, do you have any thank yous or shout outs or words of advice to future skaters in the community? Like, uh, well, I feel like if I try to say a word of advice now, I'd be kind of forced. I feel like I yeah, don't force. I said whatever was genuine at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, shout outs. I think that have talked about a lot of the people who have influenced my skating the past couple years um and just oh shout out to my brother too i grew up skating with you know a twin brother and that was kind of interesting it was like kind of like a battle in a way you know like just like a funny one different aesthetic and skating he was insane so he would do like 450 front royale like eight months into skating like ledges and like he was insane like broke his ankle at like a young age and just stop skating he would have been like like different type of skater but pro right now for sure like 100 mm. percent without a doubt he's a very talented individual and everyone in my family is a very talented individual shout out to my sister jenny you know she's a very motivated person she used to be a professional MMA fighter and now is getting her phd in psychology like so it's wow. like having an older sister like that is just like wow like you know like motivates m- me and pushes me you know and like um lewis Hector, you know, people that I already named. There's just so many. I'm Small sure. Needs. I'm sure I need to. Scroll. <laughs> I'm sure I missed a lot of names, but I love and I'm thankful for everyone who's been, you know, on this journey of inline skating. You know, or just throughout my life. You know, I've met a lot of great friends and just beautiful people here. Yeah. So keep on skating and just focus on the little things that make you happy. You know, like learn the soul grind today or whatever. You know, just that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. I love it. Beautiful. Amazing. Yonder, you're the man. Thank Thank you so so much for coming on. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Again, if you are watching live, stay tuned. We still have one more episode from our Blaney Cup 2021 marathon. Extravaganza. 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 Spectacular. Spectacular. Okay. (laughs) We can do it both. Um, Yeah. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. And thanks to our sponsor, Blank. Check out the new Sean King Pro Model Skate. If you're at the Blading Cup this weekend, stop by the booth. They're going to have the skate there for you to check out, and you can pre-order it so it can come to your door ASAP. Cool. Please hit the like button. I noticed there were like around 100 people watching this live. Only 12 likes. Ew. <laughs> hit the like button. Ew. Come All on, right. people. You can hit that like button for us. Come on. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. We'll see you later, everyone. Peace.